Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, September 11th, 2018 select meeting of the select board. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, I will start the meeting with just a few opening words, and then we'll go into the um, liaison reports. So I wanted to say uh, a couple of things. Uh, I wanted to open the meeting with a reminder, reminder to all, all, all of us, including myself, that we have a lot to accomplish tonight. Therefore, to the extent possible, let's try to keep our statements as succinct as, as possible. Um, but, uh, and there will be no sand timers this evening, as stylish as they are. A couple of fellow board members indicated that they could be perceived as stifling a member's right to speak. Um, and I don't, I, that was not my intent. Uh, and I apologize for not being a little more savvy on that one. Um, anyway, I'll try to, uh, you know, let's try to keep on topic and moving along. And I, I'm sure all the board will help me with that. Um, and even myself, because I tend to, I've been known to ramble at times. So feel free to signal me by kicking me under the table, Barry, or <laughs> sorry, no. giving me a punch, Vanessa, if I'm starting to ramble. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, wrap it up. Um, that said, people, people, you know, all the selectmen have a, or, uh, sorry, select board members have a, have a right to speak. Um, and as long as we're on topic and not repeating ourselves, that's that's totally cool. I, I also wanted to um, make it an apology for a mistake I made at the last meeting. Um, at, at the beginning of the meeting, um, I tried to stop John from speaking on the open meeting law violation, and uh, it was a it was a gut sort of panic response, thinking that it may somehow jeopardize our legal standing with uh, the um, open meeting law. So I apologize to John for trying to stop him to speak. That was that was incorrect. All right, um, so with that, let's go to um, the, the um, reports. I was trying to find my, okay. Uh, who would like to start? So Dan has requested to go last. John? Yeah, I'll go first. I've been actually out of town for about 10 days, so uh -huh. uh, I don't have a lot to report. Um, uh, there will be an update that Barry is going to handle for me because he was a little closer to it for our CASA. That's really exciting news. So I'll Ooh. pass and defer. Okay. Thanks, okay. Thanks John. Vanessa? Uh, well, RMLD is having an electric vehicle ride and drive event this Sunday at RMLD um, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So if you're interested in um, talking to dealers and current owners of electric vehicles, you can go and check that out. Um, the cemetery board met earlier this evening. Um, I've learned that they now have to have bottled water at the cemetery building uh, because the faucet water is brown. So that's being looked into, but in the meantime, they have bottled water. Um, they've been struggling with having dogs on cemetery grounds, um, and they're evaluating different methods of trying to communicate to the town um, that dogs are not allowed in the cemetery. Uh, and they're also working on a variety of short-term and long-term goals, which I'll report more on at the next meeting. Uh, oh, I was also at the community meeting last night to discuss um, the rodent issues in some parts of town. Um, Andy was also there with me. Um, there's a little bit of a frustration as far as the response from the town. Um, there was discussion about uh, having a um, communication educational outreach program for neighbors to proactively take efforts um, to decrease primarily food supply um, for the rats. Um, I know we have some people here in the audience that were there at the meeting last night. They may want to see more on that later. Um, there was also uh, an exterminator there 
um, who is going to be working with some of the neighborhoods for a neighborhood wide plan. You can add that. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I, I spoke as, as well. Um, there were, did, did, I'm sorry, did you mention who in the town was uh, I, I did not. So, so um, they had a couple speakers at this meeting. Um, a member of the Board of Health came. Uh, uh, the assistant town manager showed up uh, in Bill the Bill evening. Bill. I'm sorry, assistant Bill, town Bill. manager. And the health, and the, yeah, and the health agent. And then the neighborhood also uh, in, invited an exterminator, and they all fielded some questions. Um, I think uh, the I'll speak. I'll speak about this. I undermine. I'll let you go. Uh, that, that's all for me. Thank you. Okay. So um, the big topic, if uh, that has been coming up again and again. Uh, in our uh, in our emails and the meeting last night, the Board of Health meeting uh, two weeks ago that I attended, uh, you know we continue to receive complaints about rat problems. Um, the the matter this matter falls under the purview of the Board of Health and our public health agent. Uh, and then, like Vanessa said, I attended a neighborhood group meeting. Um, my and the Board of Health met two weeks ago to discuss their action plan and and that is I encourage you to watch that on YouTube uh, so and, and they discussed for yeah they dis discussed a plan for rats um, and you should expect to see some information about rats and and um, what to do about them, what kind of health risks they pose. Um, to me, that's the, the biggest question. It, what kind of health uh, threat is that? It, it is there? And, and uh, in the meantime, I provided Bob, as I promised last meeting, I provided Bob with uh, two articles on the human health risks of rats and an article on the dangers posed to pets and wildlife that may eat poisoned rats and those are, are found on the select boards website under a title that we need to change public health information from the select board chair um, it should probably read Bob I don't know if Bob if you could add the words uh, public health information about rats uh, from the SB chair it's, it's a little less broad does that sound reasonable I as I understood the plan was to move it to the board of health it is so it, it, it is yeah, just so everyone understands that I'm not making a general statement on public health. Um, it's about the rats. Um, One other point. Of yes. Um, should anyone experience, see, um, have any sightings or want to report it, please do contact, uh, you can contact the town manager through the email address, which is? Uh, town manager at ci.reading.ma.us, just like it sounds. Okay. Uh, or you the can website. contact the select board via the town website. You can also report it via the see, click, fix feature. Um, you can take a picture on your phone and it, it gets sent to the town. Um, social media does not count as a reporting metric. Yes. <coughs> um, uh, Bob, are you going to cover the free health fair this Thursday? Give a, a, oh, so, so just to be, be advised that this Thursday from 10 a.m. to noon in the Pleasant Street Center, um, the uh, there will be a free free health health fair. Um, you, you can get shots, uh, you know, the flu shot, blood pressure measurements, eye checks, hearing checks, which I think my family thinks I need. Um, and it's going to be staffed by the Reading uh, Public Health Department, which is so. So this is a great opportunity to um, get some health work done, uh, and it's free. Um, lastly, I just wanted to comment on it. We get a, a lot of emails. Keep the emails coming. It doesn't matter whether you're criticizing us or saying we're doing a great job. Whatever, bring matters to our attention. We want to. We want to hear from you. Um, <coughs> That's how we learn, that's another way how we learn issue about issues in town. Um, but I wanted to talk about uh, two, two emails. One was a request, um, a resident question why the birch metal lights are left on all night. Uh, 
Bob, are you away? Do you, do you know about that issue, or is it so you're taking care of it? Um, there was vandalism on the light switch, so it was unable to be turned off for a couple of nights. Oh. So it's been repaired as of, I'm going to say Monday, but probably last late last week. Okay. We haven't heard it since, so hopefully it's under control. Have you had a chance to respond to the oh, yeah. resident? Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. Who does the bill go to? <laughs> for the lights being on. Yeah. You volunteer? <laughs> no, uh, I would assume the town Tiny has to pick stuff. that up. Yeah. 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 yeah, where there was vandalism, there's no doubt. Yeah. If a group has signed up and they left it on, we can mm -hmm. charge the group. That's what I... Yeah. All right. Um, and also, uh, a gentleman emailed about our policy of not allowing in second water meters. Did you were you able to respond to that, or I have not speak because to that? the board in the past has uh, said they wanted to discuss that. Um, okay. So okay. it's a future agenda topic. Probably, I, I'd say roll it into the FY20 budget discussion is the most sensible time. Okay. Mm -hmm. The board has discussed it on and off for a few. Years. All right. Well, let's make sure you know okay. you and I get it on the agenda. <coughs> And that's that's it for me, Barry. Oh, okay. Um, a few things really quickly. I attended the school committee meeting, I think maybe about a week or so ago. Um, the <laughs> one issue of note for us is that the school committee voted um, about two hundred twenty thousand for a um, a space study. Um, and as well as in, in, encapsulated in that is an enrollment study. You'll recall that um, when we got the override, a certain amount of, of money in the override was reserved toward capital. And at town meeting, um, Bob had talked about how that was going to be sort of earmarked for the school space study. It's not necessarily a kill em fix. It's for them to look at sort of what space they have, what space they need programmatically, and then kind of come up with some uh, solutions, whether it be uh, reworking other buildings. Um, they've been working, and it's actually a requirement of the Permanent Building Committee, that before they come to town meeting with any kind of request for capital, mm -hmm. that this study be performed. So um, that's going to come up at town meeting. Um, it, I think it's relevant for us, obviously, because later on we're going to be talking about sort of how we're going to be staging and how we're going to be doing capital. Um, this will be a piece of it, um, and, and so I just wanted to put it on our radar. Um, the other, uh, the other item was the ZBA held a meeting. Um, I did not attend, but sort of followed up with a number of folks. Um, the, the notable issue there was Lakeview Eaton, um, still dealing with a lot of the traffic issues. Both the developer and the town's uh, traffic engineers presented. Um, there's some potential solutions. Everybody agrees that the long-term solution is sort of looking at a comprehensive uh, look at the corridor, not ne just necessarily um, that one intersection at Walker's Brook and, um, and Lakeview. Um, the developer has agreed to contribute funds toward that overall study. Um, neighbors were sort of adamant uh, about um, some, there was some ZBA discussion about preventing left-hand turns coming out of Lakeview onto Walker's Brook. Um, the neighbors were adamant against that, saying that that would just force the traffic back into the neighborhood. So, um, you know, TBD, um, just keep going. I think they're going to, they're meeting up toward the end of October. Um, the other uh, the other item I wanted to mention, John had mentioned it, um, is about our friends at Ricasa. I real um, real exciting news there. Although obviously we're losing Erica as a as a director, she's moved on, and and Ricasa is advertising for a new director. But the work, the long term work of Ricasa was recognized uh, this week in Washington as Ricasa got um, a national award um, for its efforts in um, a National Recovery Month for the project of. Reading Unites for Recovery. Mm -hmm. And Sherry Vandenacker, who's a member of the school committee and also a board member, represented Reading at that, um, at that where, where you know, our, our accomplishments were lauded nationally. So um, that's a big deal. Um, people should be really proud about the work that we're doing here. Yeah. It's not just being recognized regionally, but it's being recognized nationally. So I wanted to make sure that people, you know, heard about that. Um, obviously, I think all of us probably were at some point at the fall fair. Um, can't say enough about the work that the Rotary did and, and the work of everybody in making that 
um, go off without a hitch. At least it didn't look like it went out. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. If there were, there was we didn't know about it. But um, I wanted just to report on a couple of things of you know um, as I went from table to table um, and met with some of the folks there from town. Just wanted to sort of point out some highlights. Um, uh, our friends at the library wanted us to remind them that um, remind folks that starting on uh, October 7th, the library now will be open back on Sundays. So that's going to start on October 7th. And rather than 2 to 5, they're going to be open from 1 to 5. So everybody's, they're real excited about that, as I'm sure a lot of people are. Um, Andy, you mentioned um, the flu clinics at Town Hall. Uh, actually, at the Senior Center, there's one also at Town Hall the week later um, from 9 to 3.30. Um, uh, basically, they will build the insurance companies, so you can come and get your shots. Um, and then um, also, lastly, I visited um, I visited our friends at the Reading uh, Educational Foundation, REF, and you know, thank them for the work that they do. And I said, is there anything that the Board of Selectmen um, can do to help you? And they just jumped on the fact that said, you guys can sponsor a tree this year at yeah. the Festival of Trees. So I did something I probably shouldn't have done. I spoke for the board, and I committed us to a tree for, for Festival of Trees. So you're, since the, I was, you're, you're the wealthiest among us. So, so since I was the one that um, you know kind of put us out there on the spot, Mr. Chair, I'll take the lead and <laughs> with, with everybody's permission yeah. um, to sort of figure out something that would, uh, we've done it in the past and then we kind of stopped yeah. but um, I think that would be a great um, testament to all the work that they do so that's it just as long as the board gets a vote in what type of tree well uh, <laughs> yes. it's probably a Douglas fir. Yeah. yeah it'll, it'll be one that could be used over and over again. yeah yeah, yeah. That's fine. So cool. I'm done thank just you Andy, I have a quick question uh, yeah. on the uh, the health fair Thursday are they getting yeah. flu and pneumonia shots or just flu shots um, I'd know? have to open up the email Gene, do you know that again Flu. Flu I, think and I only read flu, I but flu I could be wrong. Okay, because folks might be interested in both. Yep. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, announcement of a forthcoming event next Tuesday for all those in the Birch Meadow area. The Rec Committee will be holding a, another meeting on the Birch Meadow Master Plan at 5.30 p.m. prior to the regular 7 p.m. meeting. Uh, that's Tuesday the 18th. Uh, an important one here, uh, we're wrapping up the cable TV negotiations uh, that will need to go to a public hearing before the select board. Okay. Uh, we are targeting the meeting of uh, October 30th for that hearing. There will okay. be 14 days notice. Matt Cornelis has taken care of all the uh, noticing. Excellent. Uh, you'll get advanced copies of the contract along with red lines from the last one yep. so you can see what's been changed. And uh, so that we, I think the contract's actually up in late November. So this gives us uh, two meetings to get it to finale. But we will have to take a vote to okay. approve the agreement, uh, not later than the first meeting in uh, November. Okay. okay. Yeah. Go. So, so Dan, yeah. has there been okay. back and forth with the cable company? Oh yeah. They, we, oh, so, set, this so is the second session we've had. Oh, so you guys have been meeting together. Okay. Great. Yeah, sure. and it's perfect. How characterized is going uh, well. Uh, a few outstanding issues. We're going to have one more meeting uh, with internally and then with that person uh, okay. put, put the final deal together. Uh, finally, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to take a moment of uh, personal privilege. Um, today is September 11th, 2018, the 17th anniversary of the terrorist attack on our nation. The tributes we all saw today were solemn and heartfelt, especially the dedication ceremony of the new monument in Shanksville, Pennsylvania that honors the lives of the United Flight 93 passengers whose heroic actions likely saved the U.S. Capitol building from certain destruction. I wanted to take a brief moment to mention some local 9-11 unsung heroes. The two airplanes that hit the Trade Center, American Airlines 11 and United Airlines 175, originated out of Logan Airport. On board those flights were 157 passengers and crew, many of whom were Massachusetts residents. The Boston-based flight attendants aboard AA-11 were actually the first to fight back in the war against terrorism. Immediately after the terrorists aboard AA-11 had taken control of the plane, flight attendants Betty Ong and Amy Sweeney began to calm the passengers and coordinate a plan to notify the world about what had happened. Betty made repeated unsuccessful attempts to contact and enter the cockpit. Betty, Amy, and the remaining cabin attendant assembled details of the attackers from paperwork and talking to each other. 
Amy quietly notified the FAA by phone about the physical descriptions of the hijackers, their seat assignments, and actions aboard the plane as it approached New York City. This valuable information led to the grounding of all in-flight aircraft and the warning of those aircraft still in the air, including United Flight 93. Amy continued to report A-11's erratic behavior and general course to the FAA until the very end. Fittingly, two young men who rescued an elderly couple from their car moments before a train slammed into it were honored recently with a Civilian Bravery Award named for Madeline Amy Sweeney. Let us firmly resolve today to forget, never, never forget the heroic acts of our first responders in New York and Washington and by those aboard the hijacked aircraft. The price of liberty and freedom is eternal vigilance and the battle against terrorism continues. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan, for that. That's well, that's great. Okay, so now, yes. But, uh, I might, if I might ask you to approve uh, something behind me before public comment. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Um, just for the board's uh, knowledge, I, <laughs> I'm in a neighborhood where there's one or two rodents, including in my driveway. And so uh, town council suggested I fill out. Naturally, the government has a form for that. <laughs> so I had to fill out to disclose that, you know, it's theoretically possible in my job I might make some decision which might benefit myself as a person in town <laughs> don't ask me how but so he suggested that the board approve my filing of this form and I would like to participate in this issue um, without this form um, I believe I need to recuse myself from the road and issue so it's sure. somewhat simple I think so if the board could um, approve my participation in the issue with the filing um, of this form um, I'd appreciate it uh, so, so moved. Motion? Yeah. Yeah. I, that's I just second. I oh. forgot to add yeah. the case. It, it, so moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All right. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. Um, Barry reminded me I went to the Fall Street Fair yesterday uh, as well. It was a great. Uh, it was a great coming together of Redding, people from Reading and around uh, in the surrounding area. I um, had the opportunity to sit um, in the dunk tank to, r to raise funds uh, for the Rotary Club. And, um, oh, sorry? Understanding Well, understand, yeah, so there's a, a jail for understanding disabilities. We, we go in jail, put on the jail thing, and try to raise money for this great program, Understanding Disabilities. Um, and for some reason, I thought the two were connected, so I put on my bathing suit, walked over the dunk tank, and um, was doing fi fine until two uh, kids, like middle graders, were obviously baseball players or softball players, and the first one they missed, and they hit the next four each time. So I'll be in contact with their teachers. That water was cold. Um, <laughs> all right. So. So, pu public comment. I, I, I want to. I, I understand that some people were upset by the. Um, just a sec, Bill. Uh, uh, by the two-minute time limit that I that I put on uh, public comment at the last meeting. Please understand that this is not attempt in an attempt to limit free speech. I picked up the two-minute uh, limit from Chairman Arena from last year, and he justifiably used the limit when public attendance was high mm. in order to give ev allow give everyone uh, in a, a chance to speak while still allowing the board time to accomplish the work of the evening. Uh, Chair Chairman Arena often reminded us that the board is not required to allow public comment, um, but to his credit, um, I'm pretty certain that every meeting, uh, no matter what was on the agenda, he allowed for public comment, and I plan to do the same. Um, so with that, and um, a reminder to the people who comment by email, that has to go in our packet, and that is just as public as uh, public comments here. So with that in mind, could I just have a show of hands of how many people would like to speak during public comment to any issue? Because we don't have to stick to the two minute rule if there's only a few. Okay, four, fine. Uh, be succinct, but yeah, let's, uh, 
You had your hand up. Yes. yes. State your name and address. Yes. I'm um, Jackie Collins. I live on County Road, um, 21 County Road. I am affected by the Lincoln Park Road in Lincoln Park. soccer, dance, flag, football, and hockey, we did the best we could to get this letter to as many people as possible, knowing that we needed to get it there Saturday to have a decent turnout on Monday night. Um, that's when we could get a room to post it. So um, we had about 70 people come last night. There is a lot of frustration in our neighborhood about the town's response to this problem, and I will say, that I am personally frustrated by the town's response. Um, I understand that there is not a lot that the town can do on private property, but I think that we need to be more focused on what the town can do to help with this problem versus what the town can't do. Mm -hmm. And um, if you guys watched the board health meeting, you know I was there and yep. spoke very candidly about mm -hmm. some of the problems in our neighborhood. And I came back to the town hall last Wednesday morning to follow up and was told that I would receive an email even back to here the next day about what's been done since that meeting. And to this day today, I have not received anything. Um, and in my opinion, that's not acceptable to be two weeks later and not have an answer. And um, Andy and I spoke last night about the reproductive cycle of a rat is very quick. Um, a rat can deliver, is pregnant for 21 to 24 days, can deliver nine to 12 babies, and can get pregnant again the next day. So the fact that I have had 10 dead rats in my yard that in a hole that is um, three feet from my kid's swing set is a concern for me. And for the town to just say, there's nothing we can do, is not okay. I think that, you know, Chris and I put together this letter, and I don't have a copy to give you guys all, but we wrote on here things that you can do to make your property less desirable to rats. Information from the CDC. The town has to take some responsibility to be able to provide this to the neighborhoods that this is a problem in. We had 70 people show up in 48 hours from where they got this note. Yeah. There is a need for this. And, um, you know, I realize that this is a private and public issue that we need to work together on, and I'm willing to do that. But I think we can't have people calling the town hall and getting a response of, there's nothing we can do about it. So, yeah. um, and also, you know, Mobile and running commons is a big problem. Our properties are all close to there. My neighbor's property backs up to the downstairs at running commons. And there's trash all over the place in that mobile. There's no reason why two weeks later, after we've addressed that to the town, that there should still be trash all over the place in that parking lot. Yep. So, um, you know, I think I'm speaking on behalf of a lot of people in my neighborhood that are frustrated because of those responses. And I really hope that you guys will take this seriously to be able to say, yes, we need to move quicker. To have a board of health meeting and then not have one for another month mm -hmm. is not sufficient, in my yeah. opinion. We should have planned, and there should have been another meeting planned so much faster than there was. And to have a meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning is not going to work, and I've already um, made that comment to the board of health, and they have agreed. I spoke to Kevin Sexton about it last night. He said that they're working on putting another time, um, possibly in the evening, so that more people can attend. Um, so, um, but I think that as the problem is becoming bigger and bigger, I think that you know possibly the board of health needs to meet more than once a month mm -hmm. until there's some sort of um, something being done about it. And I will tell you, last night on my way home, I saw two rats in my neighborhood. 
So is it ironic that I'm driving home from a rap meeting, dropping off my friend, and there's a rat running across the street in front of our car? I don't know, but it's a big problem. We, we, you know, we really appreciate that fact. We are taking it seriously, um, and 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 I'm sure we're, we're trying to <coughs> coordinate responses with the Board of Health um, and the health agent and the town. Um, and and I promise you, we will we'll get on that. And can I just? Yeah. Um, so I, I guess a question for Bob is. You know, the things that we can do, obviously stepped up enforcement of things where we, maybe they've been, sources may, ha may, may have been identified. Um, that's certainly something that was within our purview and, and then maybe some type of an educational meeting where we can get people together about kind of some of the things that you just had talked about. I mean, um, if these things are in, in the works, that's great. Um, but just wanted to see if there was anything that, that we have done or can do. Or yeah, I would like to speak, speak freely. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they are in progress. Um, I agree with uh, my neighbor in terms of the speed of the response has been very slow. And I don't like that either, with all due respect to whoever's involved. Um, I met with um, Kevin on the Board of Health and some staff, Gene, a uh, large, a large plastic Kevin, um, yesterday. And there is definitely a communication plan in, in progress, but they just want to be careful to get the right set of facts. And I believe that uh, at the prior meeting that you were at, Andy, that I was not at, the board designated or agreed that Kevin would be in charge of communication. So it's not a matter where it has to wait for another board to help right. for the communication to go out. Right. They have to approve the. I, I don't believe they, they do. The, do the documents that go out. I don't believe they do. I believe they he designated Kevin as the person to do that. Um, so the, the idea we discussed yesterday was the Board of Health would have a interactive website, or I should say a website, and a link on the website where documents could change. So if the Board of Health didn't like something when they do meet, they could change the documents. Mm -hmm. okay. But the town as a whole would have one place to go. And um, some of the residents have provided good information. So you, Kevin, has actually researched this and has a lot of information shared with us yesterday. I expect you'll see that out this week. Um, in terms of a future event, um, we discussed yesterday, uh, and, and they want to wait till their next official meeting to discuss <coughs> the logistics of having a community meeting. Um, I'll say it'll be no sooner than early October, but to, to go beyond that, it, as you know, the board has some logistical problems in trying to meet, and they're trying yeah. to meet with all the members, not just two members out of three. Yeah. They're trying to do their best. So yes, the town has uh, done some work, and then on the uh, sort of inspection, <coughs> area the town has stepped up um, inspections of all the dumpsters mm -hmm. there has actually been aside from the mobile station on west street no complaints specifically there's there's been complaints about construction but not in terms of restaurants or dumpsters but nonetheless the town is going around inspecting all that there was some discussion of the project down by the train station um, that that builder has been really good about going well above and beyond what he's required to do for a, a rat program, if you will. Um, there actually has been no evidence of rats on that site. So were there rats in the vacant building for many years? One might wonder. I certainly think so. But that does not seem to be the source for this particular rat. You can never be 100% sure. Um, I've heard about the mobile station. I also heard that uh, the old Archstone um, had some issues, and I know our health agent was down there discussing with them. One of the issues from my perspective is, as far as I know and as far as our health agent knows, Archstone never let us know what the problems they were having, and that doesn't seem acceptable. It seems a place that large that's having issues, they really owe us a story because we all want to solve the problem, you know, wherever it may be. So beyond that, that's really all I have for now. I can now go to more meetings and participate. I, I really didn't feel I could go last night. Yeah. Um, but I will. And I've made it clear to all the all. I won't say this often, but I'll say it now. Money's no object. The yeah. problem needs to be fixed. Yeah. It's not a question of if we don't have the money to afford it. And I made that clear a couple of weeks ago. Just to <coughs> let you know that the, um, the situation with the Board of Health is a three-member board. So, uh, in order to, um, you know, for one of the members is uh, 
works at the at Harvard University in, in public health, um, and she'd be a great person to review the health risks and and all of that. Um, but she and Kevin can't call each other up and share that information because Correct. it's a violation of open meeting law. So that, that's a limitation. Um, and so trying to get more, fit more meetings in uh, would be a great way to, to solve that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Vanessa. Bob, one of the things I mentioned at the community meeting last night was if the town, if one of the efforts that the town could make is proactively reaching out to the community as a whole, perhaps through the press, uh, perhaps through some kind of a mailer, because the people that would be drawn to a community event are likely the ones that are being affected. However, your neighbors can be contributing to the rat problem without realizing it and without necessarily being affected. And so in order to have community-wide response and to engage people in helping resolve the issue for themselves and their neighbors, we need to do some kind of communication that's outward as opposed to asking people to visit the website. Because if you don't have rats, you're not going to be searching for how to avoid feeding rats on the town website. Um, so that might be a nice avenue to pursue to get more people I didn't mention board. that that was part of our discussion yesterday, was blasting it all through social media channels and yeah. press as well. Yeah, okay. yeah. So we'll do what we can. Yeah, I, I, you know, as far, again, my, I know they're very destructive. Um, my primary concern is what are the health risks to Reading residents? And, and if you go to the website, web, web links are on the select board page. There's a couple of great articles from the CDC. Just be aware, they list a lot of diseases that you can pick up from rats. But make sure you, when you look at that information, look at where the uh, diseases are located. Many of them are not located in Massachusetts. So um, there's just a, a handful. And then look at not only that to you know, get a feel for the risk. How many cases um, of that disease are reported in Massachusetts each year? And I found, for most, not, not too many. So that's a, that's a good way to judge risk. Sorry for going on. No, and I understand that the health risks are very low. Yeah. Um, but when I'm talking about a four-year-old and a seven-year-old and their friends and thinking about, you know, rat feces or urine <coughs> next to where they're playing yeah. or even a rat being right there, yeah. you know, I am concerned about the health risks. Mm -hmm. I don't want my child or their friend or myself or any of my neighbors to be right. in that very small percent of, you know, those health risk numbers. Right. And, um, you know, I think it is important for us to think about that even though the risks are low. Um, I'm, I'm not agreeing with the, your risk characterization because I'm not in a position to do that. I'm just getting out the information. All right, thank you. Does it, you know, I'd like to give the board, the rest of the board, a chance to comment on this because this is an issue of major concern for many residents. Uh, anyone want to add I, anything? I mean, the only thing that that I would encourage is just as soon as the Board of Health can kind of quickly come up with. Um, a communication plan and, and a way to kind of convey this to get a community just like what Kristen says just about you know if there's a if there's a disease rat borne disease that only shows up in Louisiana well let's not put that on the website let's just get experts in there going to talk about what the risks are here what some of the things people can do to prevent their stuff here um, you know just be able to kind of communicate with each other so I mean that's my only concern and then also too if, if, if there are if there are offenders um, we, you know, we, we go after them vigorously. Um, I mean, the rats don't walk around with a sign that said, you know, if found, please return to Longview Road. <laughs> you don't really know 100%. But, I mean, if there are clear and obvious places where there's activity and people are not doing the right thing, well then, and we have the power to enforce that, then we should, you know, we should make them uh, exchange some coin of the realm with the town until it's fixed. And, you know, that's something that we can do today without a meeting. And, you know, that's all I would say to kind of encourage that. And, and then also, you know, Bob, thank you for, you know, uh, you know we're, we're cash strapped on everything else, but I, I think it's important to note that what you did and what you said was that, you know, if there are things that we need to do to fix it, we're gonna get, we're gonna get it fixed. So, um, that's it. Okay, Dan, thank you, Barry. Good, good points. 
been said. <laughs> yeah, John. Yeah. Not to be redundant, but it is. Uh, it's mission critical. We got to get it done. And I really agree with you. I realize there's things we can't do. We got to figure out what we can do. And, and that's really, you know, kind of the thing, the place that we should step forward. Whether it's enforcement, where we can enforce. Bob <coughs> creating a an open budget to solve the problem. I, we got to act on it. Yep. So, any great. Nope. All right. Thank you very much for your comment and setting up the meeting. Bill Brown. Bill Brown, 28 Mountain Road. Um, I think since the election, uh, I think your board has been the most disgruntled uh, or whatever you want to call it that I've seen in the history of it. And I hope that you get over it and get on with the town's business. And quite frankly, I think you're getting yourselves into stuff that you should not be into. Uh, Barry mentioned the cult cultural council last time. That's none of the town's business. That belongs to the churches. Your job is to oversee the government of this town. And right now, I don't think you're doing a good job. You're squabbling too much among yourselves. And I think it's time to belong to the town's business. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And, and um, I yeah, think you'll. It's a hard thing to say, but I'm no, I, I I appreciate it. And it's a harder thing to hear. And and, and I recognize it. It's we're it's not we're not oblivious to it at the board, and we're we're really working on um, <coughs> working better together. Yeah, and we'll continue to maybe work on. Uh, and yeah, it's going to be. But no, we're, you know, again, I've spoken to a, a number of board members about this. And we, we just have to do better. So I, I, you'll, you'll see some improvements in that area as well. Any other public comments? Yes. Hi. Uh, Dr. Neri, uh, 155 Village Street, uh, lifelong resident. Um, I just want to address, I know it's up for discussion this evening, mm -hmm. National Bread Issue, mm -hmm. the moratorium. Um, just today, Attorney General of Massachusetts is demanding an investigation into National Grid in the situation with the lockout. Um, she calls, uh, there have been over 50 complaints with unsafe working conditions. Uh, it actually goes on, it's pretty lengthy. Um, it should be investigated. Um, the quality and the safety of service. I feel, as a resident of town, um, most of my family is in town, I think the board has an obligation to the residents to issue a moratorium immediately, especially with this information that's come to light. Yeah. It, the safety of the residents, are, I, don't, I don't want to say at risk, but this is a problem, and yeah. I think it needs to be addressed immediately. Thanks for bringing that information to our attention. I was not aware of it. Just came up today. Okay. I just received it. Uh, but I know you are going to discuss it. Yeah, yeah. There's offices here that are certainly that, that answer will, questions. That will inform our discussion. <coughs> Thank you. Yes. I am Scott Baxter on Lakeview Ave in Reading, and mm -hmm. I also support the moratorium. It's just, you have replacement workers doing jobs that people that have been in 20 years have a hard time doing. Mm -hmm. There's been explosions just recently, hit lines in Lawrence by experienced people, and you have people doing it that aren't experienced. And they can cause a big problem. And I can't speak in detail to it as much as people that are here that mm -hmm. are more up on it. And when it does come up, I'd really appreciate to hear what they have to say, maybe inform you more than I could. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, we have received a, lo a lot of good information from the union, um, and to be fair, we've also received a lot of information from National Grid and have read through it all, and, and that will inform our discussion tonight as well. Okay, because it's not picking between National Grid and the union. Uh, no, it's, it's not. This is safety. Yeah, I think you we don't pick the public over business. No, we. we that was explained pretty clearly at our last meeting. Okay. This is not about, you know, picking sides. Okay. It's it's just only about safety. Um, anyone else? Okay. So, yes. So unfortunately, I've got a number of things to say. I hope people are patient. 
Um, I'm, I'm largely following up um, first with a couple of the issues that board members have raised. Um, I talked to staff yesterday and I responded to a request by uh, Uber's Mayor Scott Galvin to support him um, as the MPO candidate. So we discussed what was best for Reading and he's done the job for eight years. What's MPO? What's MPO? Um, it's a planning, um, a local planning group. Oh. So one of your members had asked whether that's something a Reading person should step into. It's a regional thing. Mm -hmm. We believe Mayor Galvin is best positioned to continue his, his work. We asked him to think about Reading a little more often. Um, there are three uh, future agenda items in your packet. I won't go over them in detail, but they all will require driveway hearings and a butter notification. 51 Lawrence, 689 Haverhill, and 279 Haven Street. Um, I'll work with the chair to set those up in a future meeting, but just so you are aware. Um, in your packet is a response to Carl Anderson, who sent the board an email about Whittier and Tennyson. It's on page 108 in your packet, the several pages historically. There's another resident uh, that discussed Washington Street traffic that's responded to on page 146. On page 103, there's a one-page uh, synopsis of the economic development sum summits agenda. You'll hear more about that as we get closer to the date. Um, the board had asked for a, uh, a memo uh, summarizing override positions. That's on page 104. Um, offhand, I think we've hired somewhere between a half and two-thirds. Um, I'll get back to why not more later. And that, um, the, the last part is some good news on grants, which I shared with you over the weekend. Um, on the front and center, we have a FEMA SAFER grant of 604000 to assist in hiring four new firefighters. That's one of the reasons we have not hired, hired four new firefighters yet, no. is we were waiting to hear about that grant. That's very good news. Good question, Congressman man. Seth Moulton was um, really helpful in that, Dan. Uh, okay, so we went to the taxpayers for money for these firefighters. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that play with our levy limit uh, request um, that, that they agreed to raise? Should we now be uh, well, looking for an underwrite? You no? can you can discuss that as tax classification. Certainly, mm -hmm. it's going to work out to let's say roughly a little over two hundred thousand in the current year. Yeah. Um, whether we just turn that money back to free cash or whether we um, underwrite the levy, as you mm -hmm. say, there are two reasonable options. We had to apply for the grants before the override happened. That's just the timing. Um, if the override had failed and we received the grant, we would have had a hard discussion because we would have been promising to hire the four firefighters without financial support at some point down the road after a couple of years. We probably couldn't have accepted the grant. And we probably no, could we not have accepted the grant. And in the past, I have not allowed, if you will, the fire chief to apply because I said I can't make that promise. But last year with an override, at least on the ballot, I felt there was a reasonable shot. We might be able to have a good outcome. This is the best outcome. So yeah, Dan, it's it's a reasonable question. I, I can alert Victor to that, and he can come in with some information for tax classification. But uh, just to be clear, I don't know the exact timing. Federal mm -hmm. fiscal years are well, it's important to ascertain that. Yeah. It, it is. So you know, a little over two hundred thousand in the first two years, mm -hmm. a lesser amount in the third year, but the total is six hundred four thousand between wages and benefits. Starting FY nineteen or FY nineteen or that's what we're not sure. I'm going to guess it's three quarters of this fiscal year, starting October first. But that's the detail we don't know. Well, well, Bob, if one of the options is, you know, to free cash, could that just make the override get, you know, bigger legs? Yeah. Well, that's not keeping faith with the taxpayer, Gary. We said we needed that money for that specific purpose. With all due respect. Right. I have a question, Bob, for point of clarification. My understanding is that the grant is for three years, mm -hmm. correct? So if we were to do an underride in order to make the taxpayer whole, what would then happen? Because the, the grant money is also for a lesser percentage each year, right? So at year four, the town still has those four firefighters, and now we need to yeah, fund them. You do the math. And yeah, that okay. first three years, you you, yeah, you underwrite right. about the same amount the first two years because right. you get 75% grant funding. In the third year, you have to underwrite less because you get, I think, 35% grant funding. And then you can't underwrite at all in the fourth year because you don't get grant funding. It's a question so, of how you write the underwrite. Yes. Yeah. So you write it so that it would bounce back, if you will, or be diminished by less. Well, you know. my, my question was when we talk about, you know, whether we... Um, or return it to free cash if we keep that 
um, and don't do an under ride, then in year four, are we better off financially because now we've saved that funding from the override. Essentially, we, we've held it in order to use it later on down the line. Yeah, but it's a philosophical question. Does the 600000 go back to the taxpayer or into our wallet? Those are the two options. I think our savings but, account is a better. Well, okay. But just to be clear, I, I think I the mean, word underwrite right. has to be used carefully. If you want to go to the voters for an underwrite, that's one thing. Correct. Um, if you just want to set the tax levy and leave some unused levy, mm -hmm. which right. is, I think, what Dan was referring well, to. Well, one or the other. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's that's what's in this board's mm -hmm. purview right. and subsequent boards each year in tax classification. So we'd have to do that in November. You could. I mean, I mean, no. If we, if if that was an option, it would have to be in this. Can, well, can unless you want to go to the voters for an underwrite, in which case it can't can't be till next April. Right. Could do I that. need to uh, uh, interrupt because so, I I let Vanessa interrupt John. Sorry. I'm not sure you were finished, John. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm good. Okay. Sorry about that. If we need to make the determination in November, can we have Victor present in October so that we have a little bit? I think he's time. planning to come sure. in with a preview in October, yeah. yes. Great, thank you. And I won't go over the others, but you saw there's another list of several grants that are all good news for us. Yeah. <laughs> but this is all good oh. staff work that got this Thank time. you. Yes. yes, it is. And um, it was the most pleasant part of the packet. Anything else, Bob? No, nope, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, next up. Oh, yeah. Why don't we do, uh, we have a couple of procl procl proclamations now. Uh, first, any, anything that wasn't anticipated within the past 48 hours? Okay, just check. Uh, so we have a couple of proclamations <coughs> and, uh, and certificates, I believe, right? So, one so the Barry's going to... So why don't we do this one first? You okay. to start? Uh, move that the board declare September 2018 Hunger Action Month here in the town of Reading. Second. Any discussion? Anybody like to give the background? You've been looking into this. Yeah. Yeah. Do, I, do you want to? Why don't I'll you start reading? We had a okay. request for this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, whereas September is Hunger Action Month, when the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks unite to urge businesses and individuals to take action in their communities. And whereas chronic malnutrition weakens the immune system and can lead to stunted growth, poor cognitive ability, fetal defects, <coughs> mental retardation, and even death. And whereas approximately 3.1 million children die from undernutrition each year. And whereas 1 in 11 people in eastern Massachusetts is at risk of hunger. And whereas a recent study shows that 34% uh, of those at risk for hunger in eastern Massachusetts earn too much to qualify for government-provided emergency assistance. Whereas the Greater Boston Food Bank serves residents of 190 cities and towns in eastern Massachusetts, distributing enough food to help over 142,000 people monthly. Locally, Bread of Life is in the top 10% of member agencies of the Greater Boston Food Bank, distributing over 1.5 million pounds of food. And Bread of Life provides over 1 million free meals through its food pantries, evening meals, and food delivery services to residents of the communities north of Boston. <coughs> so uh, one way Reading residents could honor this petition is by supporting their local food bank or Bread of Life or the Greater Boston Food Bank. Uh, yeah. be a suggestion we could make. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. And thank you, Vanessa. Donation bins are at the local supermarkets where you can contribute. Thank you. Um, uh, would anyone like to make a? Will you make a motion? Second. In the second. second. Okay. Uh, Barry seconds. And then um, any discussion on the topic? Uh, seeing none. All in favor? Um, so moved. Thank you. <coughs> Barry. Okay. Yep. So um, I don't know why I always get to do this. I, we have we have uh, Reading's longest serving Boy Scout here at the table. Yeah. But um, yet again, another. Eagle Scout from Troop 702 in Reading. Um, Timothy J. Kelly Jr., um, TJ, um, who's uh, following in his uh, family's great footsteps of public service, um, Tim Kelly and Christine Kelly, uh, who are active in Reading. Uh, one is Eagle Scout, and I'm going to be presenting. I'm glad we were able to get it this signed and done because I'll be presenting it to him uh, at his um, uh, at their ceremony uh, on Sunday. But this uh, is a certificate to, uh, is hereby awarded to Timothy J. Kelly Jr., TJ. 
in recognition of his achieving the Eagle Scout Award for his leadership project in which he built an extension of the boardwalk in the Reddingtown Forest, which included the removal of a temporary ramp. And this project allows for better access to an area of trails in the town forest where the ground's often wet and muddy due to rain, as well as creates trail uh, access to a previously unconnected area of the town forest. This is probably the third or fourth Eagle Scout project in the town forest, and what it's really doing is each project is sort of connecting pieces before that couldn't get done. So, um, and I know that there's a few more projects being planned out there. So, um, this is to thank TJ for his work, and, and with your vote, I'll be presenting this to him. So, are you moving to accept that certificate? Yeah, I so, so yeah. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Congratulations. And um, I will get this to TJ on Sunday when he uh, gets his uh, uh, award and um, in front of his friends at the end. So thank you. Thanks for doing that, Barry. Um, so, next up. Um, okay. Do you have one for Kevin Bowman? Oh, right. Yes, there is Okay. You should probably make the motion. For yeah, so. so um, Uh, this is the Korean one? Yes. This one in Korean? Okay. Um, move to approve the certificate of appreciation uh, presented to Mr. Young John Kim, Consul General of the Republic of Korea in Boston. In appreciation for your participation in awarding the Korean Ambassador for Peace Medal to the deserving veterans of Reading who served and sacrificed during the Korean War. The town of Reading is honored with your presence as we celebrate these true American heroes. Second. Barry, Mr. Kim will be visiting Reading, I believe? I think so, yes, on the, on the 22nd. Yes. 22nd. Yeah. 11 o'clock, Park Middle School, 22nd. Here's a draft. Yep. Thank you. So that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all in favor? Great. Okay. Moving along. So the first item is the petition for street name change, uh, Ordway or, uh, Terrace to Frank D Driscoll Way. Bob, would you like to take yeah, a lead um, on this? Susan Darling True has uh, made such a request. I assume she's in the audience today, so we'll get to you uh, shortly. Um, a couple comments from a staff perspective, um, and I've asked some board members. Um, we have no idea how to do this. Uh, no one has ever asked us in recent memory. So we name new streets that are created all the time, and we know the exact process for that. So just be aware, um, if the selectmen do have interest, the town has some research to do as to exactly how to do this. Um, we know it involves federal because of the post office as well as state law. I'm sure it's possible. Uh, but I also know communities have taken other approaches to honor people, <coughs> such as not renaming the street, but giving it a second honorary name. So there's other vehicles. So this will be a preliminary request tonight, and the staff will have to go back and do some work. I'll probably involve town council at some point, and we'll come back with options. Okay. And also, Virginia Adams sent you an email today that I forwarded. Yeah. Yes. Um, just so the neighborhood is aware, they may not be, I was not. Uh, Ordway Terrace uh, honored Ordville Ordway, who served as the Reading Fire Chief from 1912 to 1936. Um, so I'd invite Susan. Uh, they have your uh, your email and your packet if there's anything you'd like to say. Well, basically we want to name it at the Frank Driscoll's way because many of you might know Frank, some of you that don't know him. He has done more for this town than anyone can imagine. Um, this is some of the things. He coached right now as JB softball team. He founded the town select travel softball team. He was president of the Reading Boosters. He helped build the fish pond at Kelly Elementary. He worked with Reading, Reading veterans as the veteran, a veterans agent for many years. He was custodian of soldiers and sailors' grave, and this year he made sure that every single veteran passed and ready had a flag and flower on the graves for Memorial Day. He was on a lot of committees. He worked heavily with Reading Recreation, played a large part in building Imagination Station. He was an EMT and a firefighter, and he was also president of their union. Uh, he was a support system for those serving and joining the military, and most importantly, Frank was a private marine who served two terms during Vietnam 
where do you see the purple heart in the middle corner? So, sorry. <laughs> so, Frank was, Frank was awesome. And that's why we wanted to be named. Woodway Terrace is a private way. It has two houses on it, Frank's house and a house that is under construction <coughs> being rebuilt. So nobody has moved in yet. And two corner lot houses, which is myself and Jill Mary Mayberry's property. Um, as you said, even if an honorary street name for him above, I know like Chicago and stuff does that, that would be phenomenal. Um, Frank should be remembered for everything he's done. He was kidding, he loved Reading, he had a passion for Reading. Um, he made impacts on our youth that turned them, turned kids that were going in the wrong direction, he turned them in the right direction. Um, so he should be remembered. Thank you very much. Would any uh, board members yeah. care to comment? I mean, I, I agree. This town owes a debt to Frank. Um, and whether it includes changing a street name or that in addition to something else, I, I think that um, we all need to figure out what's the what's a really appropriate you know way to honor the service that he did. Um, and so um, it's not lost here. So. We get that. And, uh, obviously, what Bob said, we have to figure out kind of the logistics of the street stuff. And you know, do you take away naming a street of somebody who also did? Commute? We have to figure all that out. But I think it's safe to say, at least I can speaking for myself, that we'll figure out an appropriate way to honor Frank's service to the town. Well, I didn't know Mr. Ordway was the fire chief of Reading, which is with Frank being a firefighter. So if I could change it instead of the name being completely changed to making it honorary Frank Driscoll's way. And the reason we picked Frank Driscoll's way, or if one, it was always Frank Driscoll's way. Amen to that. That is nice. It makes the sign less, if you put just like Frank's way, it makes it less attractive for people to borrow the sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I read that. The neighborhood is well lit. Um, the neighbors are very watchful. We are approximately 300 feet from Main Street, so it's not something that could get stolen quite easily. So we would have to have work for it. John. Yeah, I, um, I, I really understand where you're coming from. Um, it, it, I found it to be very informative and interesting that a 25-year fire chief was the, was what the original street was named after. Yeah. That seemed to be pretty interesting. Um, for the rest of you, I did some research on this. Actually, was in Chicago recently. This is something that's common. I, you know, when it came up where I grew up, this was a common thing that there was the street sign, and then there was the honorary way, or you know whatever it might be. Um, and I did send something off to Bob, which I think he will share with you. I did some research on what some of those might look like. Mm -hmm. New York, for example, has a you know a, you know hundreds of them. And, and I forgot to keep track. Yeah, um, <laughs> and they you know so I, I think that there I think we just got to figure out the right way to do it and probably create a policy. Um, that would be good. I think that's probably the way to do it, so that we get it right, and, you know, get an acknowledgement done, and, mm. and don't turn Google upside down. Uh, so uh, anyway, I, I do think that we need to take this under advisement, and there is some research that I've passed along to Bob that I think he'll share with the rest of you. So. I agree. I think a policy is a wise thing because I can see dozens, if not more than dozens, of similar applications coming in. If we start doing this, and we have to have some guidelines as to how we do it, when we do it, who we do it for. Which section you're talking about? Is oh, I don't know. I'm select talking about policies. In, yeah, selectmen, somewhere. We'll figure it out. Okay. I don't want to get into the weeds tonight. Yeah, yeah okay. So, you know. That makes sense. Um, y yes, and then yes. Um, just one of the This isn't like it's Main Street. This is a private way, so it's. Just oh, it's a private way. Private way makes Right, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, Bob, could we ask you to provide an update <coughs> on what our options are and how to move forward for our next meeting? Assuming there's enough time on the agenda. I'm assuming see. there won't be much of an update in two weeks, honestly. No, I think this enough. is going to take four to six, but okay. I will. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, there was another. 
person in the back. Um, my name is Stacy Crystal Hall. I'm one of Frank's daughters. And I just want to thank Sue for bringing this forward. Um, his entire family is pretty much here, including best friends. Um, so we appreciate the boards uh, listening to this. My dad was very proud to live on Ordway Terrace because he knew it was a fire chief. Um, oh. And he knew that wholeheartedly. Um, he, if he knew Frank, he would probably say, no, no, we're not going to do this. Um, but I think it's pretty fitting. I think um, I remember when the Hitchy Post put out the townie shirts and the hats. Um, he considered himself the original townie. He worked tirelessly doing up family time to work for this town. And I think most of us know that he, um, he chose to, to be in this town for his entire life. Uh, as Sue mentioned, um, he made sure as a custodian um, of sailors and soldiers' graves that um, on Monday, before he passed away on Friday, that all the soldiers and sailors had some form of remembrance. And so I, I do implore you to consider this. And I know it can be tricky because you will probably get a thousand other requests. Um, but as Sue mentioned, this is privately. There are two houses, one occupied, at, actually not even one occupied at the time. <coughs> so thank you. Sure. Thank you very much for coming, and my condolences on your loss. Um, so the mood of the board on this is to have. I think we said it. Yeah. yeah have Bob, to look into it. Bob research the option. It's going to take a little. It's going to take a little longer than. Uh, we we'll got it right. You know, but yeah. Yes. Oh, a question, Bill. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, both uh, Ronnie and I have worked with Frankie for a good many years putting out the factors, and nobody deserves it better than Frank. The only thing I would suggest is to the town seal and put the Marine Corps in the water. And I'll leave by the <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again? On the, on the sign that goes up there, they generally put the town seal and yeah. put the Marine Corps in the water. And I like to rag on the Marines because I can always tell them they're <laughs> on the shores of AAA and they were. <laughs> My things I used to write with Frank, but he always emphasized doing his way and what he would write. Good work. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay. So that being resolved. Do you want to take two minutes? Yeah, we, sure. can, take, uh, yeah. we can take a couple yep. minutes. Yeah, I got
Oh, and we all have yeah. to I was out of, I was out of line with the We're all doing our best. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, now we're uh, so we're back in session eight fifteen. Um, we're about uh, half an hour behind. Uh, this discussion is about the continuation of the discussion regarding National Grid and the United Steel Workers, which we've talked about now for two meetings. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Bob um, to pre to summarize the situation and also to present uh, some information we received from the town council. Okay, um, behind me is a document that you had in front of you at the last meeting. <coughs> um, a motion was made and a seconded and approved that this change would be to the title of the document. A motion was made down here and it was seconded, but you did not vote on this one on accepting or rejecting this change. Right. You instead paused and asked town council uh, to give an opinion on some facts that, that Vanessa brought up. Yeah. <coughs> two, two, two laws. Uh, right. 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 So um, uh, to summarize very briefly, yes, town council was aware of those and he wrote a five or six page memo. Um, explaining in detail why these laws were on the book 100 years ago, and case law since um, has essentially obliterated them. Um, let me get to some of the specific points. Um, Page three is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just read some of this. Both yeah. Section 70 and 75 redate the consolidation of regulatory authority over gas utilities in the mass DPU, and courts have consistently held that these provisions must be, must be interpreted in light of the broader grants of authority that have since been given to the DPU under Chapter 164. Um, and then he goes on to give you case law, to give specific instances where 70 and 75 uh, were passed over, if you will, by courts. Um, in basically, um, it's real simple. The state created an authority, and the state's authority um, will hold authority over those old chapters. That's the simple summary. Um, you have the whole document if you have any questions. I'm pretty familiar with it. But again, the short answer is yes, he was familiar with these two laws on the mm -hmm. books when he wrote the opinion he shared with you last time. Um, he uh, Bob, would you mind if Dan interrupted for one second? Not uh, did you have more? I have a no, uh, that's a summary. Can you uh, ask bring me. up page one and the first paragraph? I think is important for folks to see. Oh, okay, yes. Uh, Let me read the first two paragraphs just sure. so it's on the record. <clears throat> Relative to the ongoing labor dispute between National Grid and the United Steel Workers, I've been asked to provide an opinion regarding the board's authority to impose certain limits or restrictions on work <coughs> undertaken by or on behalf of gas companies. For reasons set forth below, it is my opinion that one, the, back, the board lacks authority to impose a moratorium on the issuance of permits for gas pipeline construction or maintenance. And two, any conditions imposed on such permits that are inconsistent with state law, town bylaws, or regulations may be found invalid if challenged. And I think his second paragraph might be the most important part. Yeah, we talked about this. In reaching this conclusion, I recognize that the chances of the town becoming embroiled in a battle with National Grid or with developers who are relying on National Grid connections may not be high, especially if the current lockout is ended promptly. My opinion is therefore relevant to your deliberations with respect to potential board resolution, primarily insofar as the board needs to be aware of the legal limits of authority and the worst case consequences if its actions are challenged. So in other words, um, he's cautioning you in several areas, telling you what your authority is and is not, but he has no ability to predict whether if you don't pay attention to his suggestions, anything bad will happen. And he's saying that you know, National Grid is unlikely to pursue it, if, especially if the situation is resolved quickly. Yeah. But it's important that town council give you his legal advice. Bob, uh, go ahead, Barry. But also in there, um, what, because the, the, the motion before us is that we won't issue gas permit. But I think also in there, or I read something, is that we don't really have the authority. We're not the issuing body. Not for everything. Right. That I mean, some things maybe, but not. Yeah, not, yeah. not. Only street openings and pole placements. Right. 
his opinion shared with you at the last meeting cited your limit of authority. So right. you don't have any authority over the CPDC, right. over the building inspector, and there's a number of right. other situations. Right. Yes. A city does have that authority. Hmm. That's why aldermen maybe can do this. Right. And, and maybe Not to say they don't have all these other issues, but they at least don't have that issue. Right. Yeah. Uh, yes. Right. Um, so I'm curious what um, other town council has advice they provide. Stoneham is a town, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and I know they passed a moratorium. I don't know if they got legal advice first. It's possible. I, I mean, I mailed the selectman there and they said thank you. We didn't, didn't know that. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I would agree that the risks are low um, in facing a situation where we may be challenged. Um, in consideration of town council's advice though, um, might I recommend changing the wording um, and having a compromise, which is that um, the town allows uh, businesses and residents to move forward with um, gas projects should they so, so choose, um, <coughs> keeping in a stipulation that National Grid should inform them that uh, contract workers um, are replacing union workers and put a moratorium on all town of Reading gas related projects because I believe the email stated that there are projects that have not yet begun but are slated for gas pipeline replacement that was in one of the emails I could dig it up um, so this way we do have the authority to stop projects that we, the town of Reading, are doing. Um, however, we are not imposing that on residents or businesses. I, could, I, could, I, I just asked Bob a question. Uh, if you said we, the, although the risks appear low to ha having this um, brought up by um, the national grid, when you say if they do, something bad will happen, or, or, or you know, if we're challenged on this, what does that mean? Does that mean legal fees and? I, I, could be I didn't say anything other than what this letter says. Right, it's right. Just I'm not. I don't mean to put, put words in your mouth. I'm just, I just can't really recall the that the second uh, paragraph of Ray's. On the, you know, he said, and the worst case consequences of the actions if they are challenged. What are those worst case consequences? Does anybody know? I don't think anyone can know. Well, they sue us, they well, challenge us. I mean, you yeah. know. You're open to potential litigation. Right. You are. I mean, there's no question. That's I mean, why I, we hire right. Even if it's this, yeah, No, no, I, 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 I'm lawsuit. just asking right. what those consequences are. You could rule out a lawsuit. I'm not saying you'd have one. But yeah. I also think it's important to recognize the safety risk that we, if we choose not to pursue a moratorium, there's a safety risk that we as the leadership of writing are choosing to ignore. The patch had an article about Medford having a grade one leak that was incorrectly identified the first two times. It was investigated by the contract. That's a risk that we are putting on the residents of Reading. So yes, there is a risk of legal repercussions. Our mm -hmm. own town council has admitted that they're unlikely to be mm -hmm. high, um, but there's also the risk of doing nothing that we are imposing on our entire community. Mr. Chairman? Yes. It's pretty clear from council's letter here that the cognizant entity is the State Department of Util yeah. DPU yeah. under Chapter 164. Yes. Yeah. That they are the entity that has to step up yeah. and police this. Yes. We are not that entity. Right. So I don't think we have the, that power or that liability, in my opinion. I mean, we have liability insurance in general anyway, but uh, I don't see how a non-action could expose us to liability. Well, it's not exposing I don't us get to that. liability. It's simply yeah. exposing us, sweating our residents to risk if well, a project isn't done properly. The DPU should be stepping in, and if Medford has authority, then they should act. Uh, Barry, um, a couple of things. First of all, you know, locking out workers um, who are men and women, honest men and women who have worked for the company for a long time, and preventing them from making a living, in my in my view, um, is is a cowardly act by by a company. Um, they should let these workers back to work and then resolve these issues. It's just 
it underscores how lucky we are to have a publicly owned utility company that provides the electricity here in Reading, as opposed to a utility company that's owned by a foreign government. A fire, uh, that's I, owned, I don't think that's right. relevant. But 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 the but, but the point is is that you know Vanessa, your point is is that well, let's let's allow local folks to do it if they choose, or, or homeowners or businesses to do it. We just won't do it on town projects. I mean, if it's da if it's dangerous, you know, on Main Street, it will be dangerous on Longview Road. So, you know, I, I I think it just it just waters down something that we really don't have a lot of power to do anyway. Right. And then the last, I mean, the other piece to this, which I think is really critical, is that um, you know, through a lot of hard work and a lot of effort by a lot of people, um, we've got funding to repave Main Street. Yes. And so, you know, while I'm really sympathetic. To, to the efforts of, of, you know, of the union to try to get these people back at the table and they're using whatever leverage they can, which yep. is basically to hurt the company in the pocketbook, and I'm, and I'm incredibly sympathetic with that. And, and, and probably they are the A-team and the people doing the work are not the A-team. I get all that. Yep. But, you know, I'm sitting in, on this side of the room right now. And so I have to look at, I think all of us have to look at, what's the best interest in the town of Reading? And, and I would hate to be the one that, you know, sees that funding go, you know, to another community because, you know, we impose something that we really didn't even have the authority to do. So, I, I mean, I, I, I'm incredibly sympathetic. Um, I'd be happy to march down with the union to the DPW, which is Dan. I agree. DPU. 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 No, 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 no. Yeah, DPU. Oh, yeah. DPU. And in fact, actually, I'd even be amenable to to, to making a, a change in our thing. Is is to basically encourage the Department of Public Utilities mm -hmm. to, um, you know, uh, look into this and and make a ruling on whether or not it's safe, because that's where yeah. really it lies. And I'd walk down to the, the union, you know, arm in arm to do that. But I just don't think we have the authority, and we risk. Um, we've been trying to get Main Street paid for years, and I, I'd, I'd hate to, to, to lose that because of something that we've self-imposed on ourselves. Yeah. Just a second, Dan. I, sure. I, I wanted to give Vanessa and John a chance to speak. Um, why, uh, Barry, are you, um, is there a reason you're concerned that we would lose this funding to repay the road? Due to this, you have to delay the paving. We have to delay the but right because there's there there mains that have to get replaced. I forget two or three on main street. I forget the locations. Yeah. Actually, I think Ryan might have written a memo on one of the paths. Yeah. If not this week, then last time. That basically that you can't do that paving work until those mains are replaced, and it's not they're not leaks. They're, it, it's sort of it, it's it's um it's not emergency stuff. It's stuff that has to get scheduled. And if they're not, I know that there's a, a time limit on the funding. Uh, and if yeah. if those if that work is if those mains are not replaced, we can't replace Main Street. We're basically shovel you know close to being shovel ready on that. If we you know there'll be other towns that will grab that funding, and then we'll have to wait again. And, uh, We've waited years for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I, I, all right. Yeah. Um, so, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll see to John if he has yeah, John. I, I, I'll be very brief. I I completely understand the situation you're in, and I. It's not about sympathy. It's about empathy. I do understand you. You know, you guys should be back to work, and I and I just feel like that should be happening. I feel like that as a person, not. But now I have to be a select. And there are some things that Barry has raised that I think are very, very appropriate. Um, you know, one of the things that we've heard is, well, we could let um, homeowners and businesses make their own decisions about whether they want to do it, not do it, is it safe, is it unsafe, and so forth. Um, and there is a regulating agency that should be stepping in if there is a question of safety. I'm not qualified to judge that. I understand why it's being, you know, brought up, but I'm not qualified to judge that. Um, I It does, you know, just kind of common sense, not as a selectman, but as a person. If you've got 20 years experience and you're trained to do it, I think you're going to do, you're going to do it a certain way compared with somebody who doesn't have that same training and experience. So, I mean, kind of all of that's true, but we're straying into an area here that as, as selectmen here representing the town and its citizens and um, it, you know one of the suggestions is that we've that we put a moratorium on public projects 
we have been painfully approaching several million dollars that we've been trying to get. You can't drive down South Main Street uh, you know, without rattling every bone in your body. Um, and we hear it, we see it on social media, and we experience it every day. And if we make a declaration that we're not going to do that, do any projects, you know, that flies away, or potentially flies away. I'm very concerned we're just in territory we, we, we're not qualified to be in, nor do we have authority to be in, and then we're supported in that thought by our town council's opinion. That's, that's all I have to say. Um, Dan, you can, oh, Vanessa. Thank you, Dan. Um, I mean, I, I think one of the things that, that seems to be getting lost here is the safety aspect. When we're talking about major gas line replacement work down the primary corridor that goes through our town, I appreciate that the funding for repaving these roads are important. However, if it turns out that the work is done to a substandard level, we then have to tear up that road again. For that for those repairs yeah. so the, there is a consideration there in how the work is being done and not just the immediate cost of repaving that road and that state grants but then how we have to compensate for poor workmanship down potentially down the line yeah, yeah potentially dan mr chairman I, I feel this is our third evening discussing this uh we spent a lot of money with the town council to get a well-researched opinion. Yeah. I think it's time to bring this to a close. I am going to move to indefinitely postpone the motion and the amendment pending before, which would effectively end the discussion on the subject. Is there a second to that? I will second, second. that. Okay. Um, discussion. I'd, I'd like to say a few words. Can I discuss in that definite Yeah, you can. Not, not tabling. Okay. Yeah. Um, sure. I'm extremely frustrated with this situation because um, our responsibility is to the safety of residents of, uh, of Reading, and, um, and especially in light of uh, the gentleman's statement about the uh, Attorney General um, looking into National Grid. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, on the other hand, so that's that is a ob obligation that I take very that uh, I know the board takes very seriously. Um, I'm frustrated frustrated by the fact that the state has on the books two laws that allow us to do this, and then has subsequently uh, created laws that um, take away that that yeah. ability. Um, and we also have an obligation to follow the law. Uh, so I am very torn in this, and I do understand the Main Street argument. Um, so those are my comments. Any other discussion on this? I mean, we've talked about it enough. I agree with Dan, we need to move on. Um, I'm, personally, I mean, I, I may need to hold my nose while I make this vote. Um, uh, but I feel uh, frustrated that my hands are tied. Yes. How you doing? Um, what, one uh, are we going to be able to discuss this at all further before you take a vote? Yeah, I, As we've been told that we were able to the last two times, and right. out of the three meetings we've got to speak once. Yeah. Um, it, it, I'm reluctant to do that because, as Dan said, we have spent uh, three meetings on this now and we've spent we've had the our town council uh, look at this very very closely so um, uh, I have to regretfully um, you can give us your seeing time or if you need to I'm sorry and you can give us your seeing time if you want but I, I don't have it with me it's a beautiful time with them. <laughs> um, yeah I would like to say that um, you know a paved road Great, it's a paved road, but yeah, okay. An incident with gas, we, yeah, that's uh, a totally yeah. different story. We 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 all un un understand the twenty three other the fix, four other fix cities and towns locally that have yeah. done. Winchester had that town council look at it, and they right. still elected to put in. Yeah, uh, and, uh, uh, 
I, I hear DPU is wildly understaffed. They have three people yeah. covering the state with two and training. And we're marching to the DPU tomorrow at noon if you want to join us. So, 100 Cambridge? DPU is substation. Oh, it's a, oh, that's where I work. Okay. We'll be here right okay. outside. You're the man. I'll be there. <laughs> Does the, board, does the board have any interest? And I'll just say this one thing, and then then we'll vote. Um, does the board have any interest in turning this into uh, a letter to DPU, as, as I think Barry has been, been talking about? What? Just quickly, um, what's the feeling of the board of, of turning this into a letter to the DPU? I don't know what we would turn into a what letter. Uh, I mean, that would take more discussion and another meeting. Yeah. Uh, we can do that. Yeah. That's kind of a different issue. It's a different together. issue. It's yeah. taking a, taking a, a different approach, which yeah. you know, I would be open to. But I think we've got this thing that Dan has brought up or you know, has made a motion around that we've got to resolve, and then a, we can go forward with a different with a different approach, which I'd be open to. Sure. Vanessa? Uh, well, technically, the issue on the table is Dan's motion to table, so I feel like we yep. need to address that yeah. first. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, so there's a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of tabling this? Of indefinite in, postponing. Indefinitely postponing. Of both the article, the suggested amendment, and the main motion. Yes. Uh, all in favor? All opposed? Um, so that's it. That's it. And and, um, and I'd like to give Barry the, uh, a last say about. Um, and J John, seems the board is open to uh, sending something to DPU. The problem is always time. Mm. Our time is stretched thin. Um, your, your thoughts, Barry? I mean, it, it, they're the, they are the regulatory body. Um, yes. And if it's the will of this board, you know, to, to have them look into the safety issues um, by having replacement workers or, or non, not as well-trained workers. Um, well, they are replacement workers. Oh, they, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know. Care, I, I have to be really careful. I use that word sometimes. But um, replacement workers doing that work over over trained folks um, that presents a safety risk. I, I, I think that that's an appropriate me appropriate message to send the regulatory body responsible for monitoring that um, from the concerns of the town of Reading, the, town, the leaders of the town of Reading. I think that's appropriate. Uh, so. Yes. Um, I was gonna say, so we have another meeting in two weeks. Um, I'm happy to take the lead on drafting a letter mm -hmm. um, to the DPU, which we can include in the packet for two weeks from now um, for board review. Um, yes, John. Thank um, you. Along those lines, um, look, we've had citizens of our town bring us a legitimate concern and complaint. And that concern is about safety around certain projects. Yeah. We've examined <clears throat> what authority we have and you know yeah. have generally come up with a conclusion that we come up dry on that. Right. So the idea right. of voted on it. You know, we we've been advised that there's an agency that is supposed to do this on our behalf. So <laughs> as guardians, you know, of the safety of our citizens, I think it is highly appropriate for us to raise the question yeah. in the form of a letter. That seems highly appropriate. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we resolve to them. I think we we need to get our money's worth from an agency. Yes. They they owe us that because they have the authority and we do not. Yes. But we have a responsibility to our citizens, as these gentlemen have pointed out. I think that's correct. I think we need to respond. I'm glad that you're willing to, you know, put that questioning letter to them and look forward to talking about it in two weeks. That's where I'm coming from on this. Perhaps make the theme one of safety and say, what, what are you doing in your regulatory role yes. to ensure that the, right. these substitute workers are up to snuff in what they're doing uh, and put given, it on them to just... Given staffing issues, I'm guessing not much. I would ask them how many times they've had an inspector in Reading since this started. These are all fair questions. I know yeah. the answer. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Is the board 
What's the feeling of the board as far as? I'm happy to have Vanessa sure. take that Thank you. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Thank we'll you. We'll get it in two weeks. Thanks. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Vanessa. Mm -hmm. See if we can come up with something and get it out. Yeah. Before any more time goes by. Great. And hopefully you guys are back to work by then. <laughs> yes. We hope so too. Um, on to uh, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so now um, we're discussing the select board policy article number 1.4 on communication. Can we have a two minute recess? Two minute recess. Just two. Yes, just two. Okay. Yeah, that your chief's discusser is discussing. Yes, <laughs> yes. Thank you. asked um, Barry and Vanessa to each speak for about five minutes and then maybe have a five minute discussion um, by the board, but that can always go longer if we feel it needs to. So who's got, which one of you goes Except first? I think I'm gonna go first. So okay. just Thanks. to kind of give it really a, a quick background, um, back I think maybe when, I think maybe John Arena was chair, I don't remember, we sort of created the sub, committee of, um, no, it couldn't have been because you were on it, so it had to be, it had to be when I was chair, sorry, um, of um, to take a look at really our communication policy. So Vanessa and I met oh, a few weeks ago and kind of just sort of scoped out some things that we thought were going to be really important to bring, and to kind of bring back. So we divided this kind of into two, kind of two pieces. Vanessa actually has a presentation, and hers is going to focus more on the social media component and piece. Mine is just going to be, for lack of a better word, um, some ideas that I th that we thought were kind of the low-hanging fruit, things that we should just get implemented immediately right away that don't have a lot of, well, hopefully don't have a lot of um, sort of conference, you know, sort of, you know, disagreement on. So <laughs> I'm going to go through some of those briefly, um, and then um, Vanessa's going to uh, focus more of her talk on some of um, some social media strategies that we might want to entertain. The notion being is that we wanted to get the feedback of the board on these um, topics, and then Vanessa and I would get together potentially then with staff and potentially also town council if there is a uh, you know an appetite to kind of to, to look at things. So right now it's just been one meeting of Vanessa and I, and we just wanted to get uh, get that out to you. So just some of the things that we thought were just you know immediate, very implementable, and should be done in, done immediately. One is um, every member of the board should, by the end of this month, if they haven't already, um, get a town designated email address. And that to do all of your town business mm -hmm. from that email address. I think, I, I, hope, I hope I'm not, but right now I think I may be the only one 
that has a, you know, Barry dot Berman yeah. dot C I M A, whatever it is. I can never remember it. I got reminded today. Okay. I, I will. Do yeah, it. me, it's very easy to do. Um, yeah. Town staff here, the the communication staff will take. Any points there? Is that that's where archival can happen? Right. The whole so. point of that is that so that's where um, if there's ever any question about right. public record, public record that is there, it goes to the town server. It's there forever. Right. As opposed to our own individual. And that doesn't mean we can't have individual email addresses. It doesn't mean that we can't. You know, use them from time to time, but basically on town business. And it's also, it's perfect for scheduling because it has an Outlook yep. component. So there's a lot of, I mean, we should have done it. We talked about it. it. Like everybody raised their hand and said, yes, by the end of September, I will have it on my, okay. Everybody, yes. Okay. Yes. And this is writing, but yes. I saw it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, another thing real quick related to that, if we're going to have business cards, we should just, some of us have business cards, we should just change them and get, get um, our email, our new email addresses on there as well as select board as opposed to board of select. So <coughs> that's the other thing. Um, another major issue that we discussed is kind of, and you talked a little bit about it um, in, in, in sort of your opening and Bob, going back and forth with Bob about, well, we got this email from so-and-so about this, where they ever responded to. Essentially, we ought to have in policy, I'll, I'll, just, use, I'll just use language from my world, um, we should have a service level agreement. Basically, that when somebody communicates with us via email, that there is, you know, pick a time, 48, that the expectation is within 48 hours, they will be responded to. Mm -hmm. The response could be basically an acknowledgement that we have, have your thing. And there's lots of different pieces to it. Oftentimes, sometimes it's a service issue, right? Um, essentially, uh, you know, there's a pothole on my street, okay? Um, there's, an, there's an issue of an opinion. I think you guys are a bunch of lunatics and, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. That's just stating an opinion. The other um, is that a request for action. All of these are sort of separate kind of identifiable topics um, and that we should at least commit to have a policy that states that within, I'm saying, I think we agreed 48 hours, maybe in some cases it's less, that they get an acknowledgement. Now the question is, well, oh, it's good, because I know, I know what you're gonna ask. Yeah. Um, so, um, and, and, then, and then A, who does it, yeah. right? So in the past, it's sort of been loose that they, email all of us and Bob will respond we think okay um, but we don't know if you did right there yep. th th which prompted the question yeah. so we need to have a place so that everything that has a loop that's closed right so because um, we put it in the packet of everything that we get we need to know whether that loop is going to be closed okay and so you know the other thing that Vanessa and I talked about and this is open for discussion too um, does the secretary respond um, for the board, um, you know, not not speaking for the per individually, but just you know, we got it, or inviting them to you know, we'll put it on a, a, an agenda, and then CC um, obviously Bob and maybe the chair. Okay, obviously it can't be three people, or is it is it Bob that responds and copies the chair and the vice chair? That can be discussed, but the but the thing is is that we should at least have an agreement that when somebody contacts us, they will be responded to. Um, and sometimes the response is just basically, we don't know yet, or we'll invite to a meeting, but an acknowledgement, okay? The other piece to this, and I bet you this is where you're going, mm -hmm. because I had the same question, and we've all done this, and we have to stop. When they write a letter, someone writes an email to the board, and it goes through that server, right? Mm -hmm. Because all of us want to be, um, we want we want to basically let them know that we that they've been heard. Oftentimes, we will individually reply back to that person. Mm -hmm. We can't do that, yeah. right? Because that's serial communication. I, I know we're doing it for the right reasons, right? We want to just we're not partially because we're not sure that Bob will get it or respond. We just want to let them know, hey, hey, we got it. We can't do that, right? Yeah. We have to designate. And we've all done it, let's, you know, but we just can't do it anymore. Um, we have to have a process in which um, that gets responded to in an appropriate way without opening us up for serial communication. Let me just, I, I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> so um, so does, that, does that mean like, you know, your next door neighbor emails the board, you know, for an action, right? And you know, it's like you wanna respond to them. Can you, does that mean you can't? No, you can, but maybe you pick up the phone or you, 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 you do it through a separate kind of thing. 
but the, but replying to replying to somebody who sent us something through the town portal, for lack of a better word, because I don't know if you're going to respond. I don't know if she's already responded, and then now we're into serial communication. So point of clarification, you're right. It's actually not serial communication as long as yeah, I think the, you're it's, wrong. It's, it's closing the loop. That's the serial communication. So if John Smith contacts us and we use him as a medium to communicate with each other, that's where it becomes serial yeah. communication. We but, can all contact one. Right. But what happens if someone says, I want this fixed, and Vanessa Alvarado says, I agree with you, we're gonna, you know. Well then. And then, uh, and then and Andrew Freeman, does, right? So we, we're potentially giving conflicting messages to people. It should be, there should be one response, and whether that's we designate the secretary or whatever. That's kind of what Barry, I'm sorry, yeah. I should, shouldn't, you know, yeah, shame right. on you right. for talk, interrupting. No, that's okay. Before, when you're when you're finished, finished, that yeah. point, I have a question. F finish okay. your presentation. And then, and then just the, the, the last piece that we talked about, um, uh, that I think that, I, may, I don't know if Vanessa's going to get into this in hers. Me, if not, I'm, you know, just let me know and I'll stop. But essentially, you know, we need to figure out two-way communication, right? So things that this board can communicate to the public with not just having response to what they say to us. Um, and a perfect example would have been, you know, had we had something in place regarding the road initiative, there, there's a way for the board to communicate kind of things. So one of the things that Vanessa and I talked about was using RCTV again. You know, I, I know you, I know Peter hated it, you probably hated it more, was the ask, the, man, ask yeah. the manager. Now it doesn't have to be that, but to utilize. Only Bill would call. Right, Oops, but, but we don't have to do that. It, it could be, you know, maybe it's the manager goes on with one of us on every couple of weeks and we pick a topic, right? And you know, it, it doesn't have to be a call-in show, but just we are out there sort of out in front of folks. We don't utilize that enough. Um, we used to do it, we don't anymore. Um, and it's a perfect, um, uh, you know, it, it's a perfect medium for us to just sort of be in front of people talking about the issues of the day. So that's all I had. And all right, let it's just so, a so comment so before the board does. Okay. Because <laughs> um, I want to add to something. So right, I want to let Vanessa there. give her kind of thing and then. Um, can, can you wait for that? Or I'd prefer to, to add some comments Go. so that you no. can all hear them first. All right. Go. Um, it, it is factually true with this board and previous boards that more than one person has replied with not identical answers, let's just say, yeah. and copied me. Yeah. I don't know how many times selectmen reply, and I don't know because they don't copy me. Yeah. So um, it is an issue of consistency. You may choose to accept that and accept inconsistency, and that's your choice. Yeah. But I'll just tell you, factually, it does happen. Okay. Um, I need to understand what my role is because there's been conflicting views of that in yes. just the last six months. Yes. I'm happy to do what you wish. Mm -hmm. um, I often get a same email as you do. I think yeah. you're on the town manager. I, yes, I'm copied on the selectman emails, the, but I often get group. a separate email yeah. just sent to town manager or to my email address, yeah. and I always respond to those. So. Maybe you need to discuss what's the proper response when I've already done that. But I'm answering as the town manager. I'm not answering for you. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to throw those pieces out there as you discuss it that um, it is a bit confusing right now. Yeah, it's not consistent. And I'd be happy to do whatever you want. But thanks, Bob. And, and um, hey, hey, hey. apologies about the, confu the mixed messages. No. We need to get this straightened out. Uh, Vanessa? Yes. So one point regarding the response, um, I, th I don't recall whether it was in April or May, but we did have um, a discussion that the secretary should at least acknowledge the emails. And so I make it a habit of actually within a day or two, um, usually less, responding saying, thanks for your message. Um, this will be added to the packet. This is on the agenda. Um, and intentionally try and refrain from including my personal <coughs> stance on the issue, um, but just a friendly acknowledgement that someone is in fact listening when they send out. And who messages. do you copy on that? What was that? You, who do you copy on that response? Usually it's pretty generic, so I don't copy anybody. You don't copy Bob? Well, Bob already would have received it. No, yeah, but he doesn't but not your response. response. My response, no. I mean, I don't tend to include much. It's uh, thanks for contacting the board. I mean, I can CC him, it's not a big deal. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't that be something you'd want to have happen? Probably, because okay. if I got the same email, yeah. I mean, I, if I can rely on you to always do it, you don't need to. 
Mm -hmm. Well, it's probably good practice. Too. I think it is good it's practice. It's not a bad yeah. idea. They have That's two fine. people with and likewise, the institutional memory. If I sure. get one that I know the board has also got, I'll copy you in my response. Okay. I might tend to speak more freely because I'm right. subject to open meeting law. So I might have opinions to share or, you know, this staff will help you with this, the staff will help you with that, whereas you might not do that. Okay, but just say, Vanessa, please do your presentation. Oh, okay. Uh, presentation. Bob, can you load up the PowerPoint? Thanks. Um, so when we talked about um, the possibility of having a Facebook page for the select board, I did a little research. There's a variety of towns that have um, board of selectmen pages, Athol, Ayer, Douglas, Manchester by the Sea, just to name a few. Um, Manchester by the Sea, in my opinion, um, had the most um, extensive content included, both on their website and on their Facebook page. So I chose to use them as an example. Um, what follows uh, is not necessarily recommended or best practices. It's simply what another town is doing. So they take two approaches. Um, one is they have on their town website um, two pieces that I thought were interesting. One is a weekly selectman's blog, which I'll go into a little bit more detail, as well as a from the town administrator's desk. Uh, that one's a little less consistent. Sometimes it's weekly. Sometimes it's every month or two. It really depends on what information is relevant uh, and happening. They also have a variety of Facebook pages, Board of Selectmen, Council on Aging, Fire, Police. We have some of these, but not all. And we'll focus here on the Board of Selectmen. Um, so, Bob, if you, next slide. Next one. Thank you. So, on their town website, they have their, as I mentioned, the Board of Selectmen weekly update. And this is what it looks like. Um, it has a one-liner. It tells you what's included in the update. Um, this dates back to August, which is when I put this presentation together. Uh, please read this week's blog for information on construction work, state primary elections, and upcoming meeting schedules. And this is pretty consistent. Quick snapshot tells you what's included. Next slide, please, Bob. And this is the weekly update. Uh, it's about 200 to 300 words. This one in particular um, focuses on their July 4th celebration. There's some construction on an intersection. There's some paving that's taking place. And um, something we share in common, they are looking for more volunteers. Uh, they also indicate when the trash and recycling pickup is occurring on, um, on, on that particular week. Um, so next slide, please, Bob. The other portion that they have is, as I mentioned, from the town administrator's desk, which is a letter from their town administrator equivalent of our town manager. This one focuses on various state grants that they've received, um, where they've come from, why they earn them, and how they're going to be spent. Uh, and like I said, these differ based on what is happening in their community. Next slide, please. This is their Facebook page. Uh, I know you're all very excited to take a group picture and get up there. Um, so pretty straightforward. And standard. they're smiling. Yes, they all look happy. Imagine that. So uh, Bob, next slide. Imagine that. Um, this is the About Us page. Pretty straightforward. Location. What I thought price here was interesting is that... <laughs> yeah, um, price range. <laughs> price is right. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have the, the hours that the town hall is open. A mm -hmm. couple of relevant links. So next slide. The content that they include um, encompasses some of what we already have on our Town of Reading page, in addition to other information. So their community events, for example, our town fair would have been on there, construction updates, fiscal priorities, meeting information like this one, volunteer openings, um, press releases from their various departments, as well as the occasional video. So next slide. This is how they're presented. And I thought this was an interesting way to address where content lives and how it's managed. The content doesn't actually live on the Facebook page. What they do is they have that one line sentence, please read this week's blog for information on construction work, elections, and meeting schedules. And then there's a link that takes you to their town website. The benefit of this is that it directs everyone to the town website for information. So if they have additional questions, they're already there on the town website. Does it go to their um, to their blog? To, but like, do they have it organized like 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 we have a on a, on the website? We have the board of selectmen, the select board. Page. Page. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, presumably it, like it would be under these. The ones that these link to go directly to their blog page. So the blog page is the one I posted earlier right. that has the various dates and these one-liners, right. and you click on it. Um, but what I liked about it is that there had previously been questions about 
what do you do if you have to change information? There's, um, we're required for documenting purposes. This takes that um, concern away because it lives on the town website. So I thought it was a nice way of addressing it. I think that's the last slide. Um, so again, just these are just um, some examples that we could follow, um, we could pick and choose. I haven't reached out to them to ask how they manage it, um, okay. if they have someone on staff dedicated to it, if it's just their admin. I didn't want to take that step without yeah. getting the field. Or do they just, you know, Or do they just assign one person it? from their board to maintain it and they rotate? Right um, so, all different options. Yeah. Is there an underlying policy, a communication policy, social media policy behind this? The state has not come out with one yet. No, I mean Manchester. But the Manchester, that's a good question and I didn't look into it. I have it. examples from other communities of those kinds of policies. Plainfield, I think we talked about. Yeah, it. yeah Bob sent us a bunch. Right. I don't know if you looked at wow. Plainfield yeah. at all. Yeah. I did not. Yeah. There are a bunch of, uh, uh, that have already been written. So um, oh, I'd like yes. to open it up for um, a short discussion, um, and then I feel this is very important work. Thank you for doing it. I know <coughs> it, we, you know it may be hard for us to come to agreement on some things, but it, we need to we we need to be seen more by the community. They, you know, they need to we need to have better outreach. We need to touch more people. Um, so I, I think this is very important work. Yeah. I, I want to add one thing. I, I know that um, the agenda item is the policy itself. Mm -hmm. But when Barry and I discuss this, I think if we're thinking of changing our communication efforts or expanding them, that it's worthwhile to decide what those are going to look like right. and how we want them to proceed before we determine a policy, right. which is why our discussion today focuses more broadly. So I, I'd like to allow Dan and John uh, a chance to uh, comment on this because uh, you've, you've had to be silent during the presentation. So, okay. uh, please, what are your thoughts, Dan? Yeah. Um, go first? Well, communication uh, should be addressed in a multifaceted fashion. Uh, I think social media is part of it, mm -hmm. but we have to recognize some of our constituents are not big social media people. Uh, we need to look at other ways. RCTV. Uh, appearances by the board or by the town manager, um, articles in the media, uh, the Chronicle, mm -hmm. the Advocate, uh, the Patch, mm -hmm. whatever you want, the Post, yeah. the Advocate. The Advocate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we all, all, love to hear from us. All, all, all different facets of that need to be considered. Regarding social media, I think there's a lot of thou shalt nots that are maybe more important than the thou shalt. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of stuff like that in the plain field policy um, mm -hmm. to guide people as to what they absolutely shouldn't be doing. You know, advertising certain content, watch what you're doing. I think that's all important mm -hmm. to include in the uh, social media policy. So I would urge it, yeah. you to take a look at Plainfield yeah. in your next go around and uh, maybe work some of it. Now that's a town-wide policy. That affects departments, boards, right. everybody. Yeah. So borrow what you can maybe and uh, we'll sum of that in next time. So, and, and then who maintains it will be an issue. Yeah, yeah. Who, right. who has the, uh, the time and the inclination and the ability and the talent Yeah, well, Bob, of course. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, or, uh, uh, yeah. let, let me just, I want to summarize your points then because I, I think they're, they're, they're important. Okay. Um, one is it needs to be a multimedia approach. Yep. Um, you know, the RCTV thing it just makes me, you know, cringe. But really? you know, really? it, yeah, no, I don't like being on TV. Um, <laughs> well, but, yeah, no, I, the, those cameras, you know, I, they're, not yeah, they're not they're not real. They're not um, your face here. So, so multimedia approach. Um, it, the, the policy of the don'ts is very important. Yeah. And then, of course, some consideration of which one of us is going to take this on. Or the content or, manager or, or, or managers. Right. Or will they, be, yeah. how will they do it? Yeah. How often? Well, there's a couple. Of, I mean, we could designate like another subcommittee, right? just like we do with the other kinds yeah. of things. It yeah. could be the chair and the vice chair. It could be a rotating. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's, there's yeah. lots yeah. of different yeah. ways. Rotating is probably a good idea. Yeah. Well, well, among so, the well one. Yeah. so, John. Yeah, I have a comment about each presentation. I want to thank you both for yes. the work that you've done. Um, mm -hmm. I found both of those presentations interesting. Um, Barry, one of the things that you brought up, and I think it's really valid, is that 
we don't know who's responding, who's, who is responding, who isn't responding. Um, to me, the one of the things that should happen, I mean, I've felt often that I needed to respond individually so that, you know, when I, you know, I knew Bob was going to say something, I thought it was important because it was something I was working on or um, somebody I knew, which happens often. Yeah. Um, and I, and, and I've been questioned, you know, I sent you an email, I never heard back. You know, I said, you didn't hear back? Well, I heard back from the town manager, but I didn't hear back from you, mm -hmm. would be the statement that I would hear. Um, and that happens a lot, frankly. I've refrained when possible, when it's somebody that I know that I'm going to run into, yeah. I, I would respond. Look, um, uh, <laughs> throughout my working life, when I was going to be away from my computer, I had an auto response. And to me, if we're all going to get on, get, get in line with, you know, a new email address, which we are all committed to get done before the month is out, to me, every single, every single email that comes in should get an auto response that we we know what it says. Yeah, you're actually doing it in a non-automatic way because right. you've taken that on as a as the secretary of our board to try to give. A reaction, a courtesy acknowledgement that really can't get much bigger than that. You know, I mean, right. you're giving it a courtesy acknowledgement. I think that just if we put the auto response on and we agree, we can all agree on what it's going to say. It's going to say, you know, your your note is going to be in the packet. Um, the things that you're probably already saying, Vanessa. I mean, the, you know, this will be taken up at a future meeting. Um, it's likely that the town manager may be responding to you, you know, um, in a more timely way. I mean, I think that's what should happen when the five of us have this common new email. There should be an auto response that we really don't respond to that. You know, that it's being responded for us and now the people on the other end feel like they've got this, you know, that, that yes, okay, they got it. You know, that's really what they're trying to find out. Did you get it? Right. You know, are you looking at it? Did you hear me? Is what mm -hmm. I think people want to know. And that was the other thing too, is that Bob very well may have like picked up the phone immediately and done it, but we didn't. So I, in fact, I still have on my <coughs> inbox all the emails that I got that I just, not sure if anybody's got I have that, that so, same so that just in case it's like oh yeah did we ever respond to that guy we may have but we don't know that we have so, I, you know yeah. i've gotten together with bob yep. with a list right say hey bob just check it right where are we here here and here yeah. in case somebody asks uh, i do the same you know thing. i mean it's just uh one of those things yeah. so yeah. my point is that relative to barry's presentation my one takeaway or my one su suggestion it's not really even a question is that we have an auto response that comes from that new band of emails that we have that is you know probably something similar to what you're already doing it's an acknowledgement it's a courtesy it lets you know that we are we've, we've all received it we've all received it and are taking it under advisement um, so the, the research you did Vanessa on um, on the Facebook page you know something I I actually think that so the weekly update piece great um, you know kind of the narrative summary great we actually have that the thing is nobody goes to the website and looks at it yeah it, you know it's called the packet and it's called the minutes <laughs> you know, I mean, so, but he, you know, he, no, people will not right. go digging for it. Yeah. But if it hits their feed, it's like, oh, you know, yeah. it's like, well, where did this come from? I've never seen this before. Right. Well, they've never seen it before because they don't go digging for it. Right. But if it pops up on a feed, I guess what I'm saying is, <laughs> I think that information. We don't need to labor over yeah. how to get it done. It's actually yeah. there. Right. You know, yeah. the packet is, we, we have made people more aware of the packet. Yeah. And, you know, whether it was for the right reason or the wrong reason, people are paying attention to it. Yeah. Um, when the packet's but, 191 pages long. 
like yeah. that's like I, I mean you want to give everybody all the information well, available? we could still do that but I mean the blog you know the blog idea it, and it, it basically if the Facebook page just says click here and it drives you to that one page summary or you know something that's interesting that's Who coming writes it there well, that's the that sticky yeah, that's idea. a challenge. I mean, so, challenge. so that's the part, when, when Vanessa and I, I mean, when we talked about this, that was sort of, we sort of kind of under, underscored that one. It's like, okay, is this done by staff? Well, if it is, then we got to basically ask Bob and the staff, is this something they can take on? Is it get, does it get done by, um, you know, a rotating collection of all of us, right? Now, if we meet, maybe we don't have to do it every week. Maybe we can do it every two weeks because that's when we meet. Yeah. You know, kind of like office hours, right? I mean, every, you know, we do, every 10 weeks, one of us is going to do office hours. Well, it could be the same thing. Every 10 weeks, one of us is going to write a, you know, page and a half. Yeah. Right. We're going to have some consistency issues around that, though, yeah. because or, some people are writers, other people right. aren't. Yeah. Or, or we designate, or we designate, right. Or, yeah, th there's ways to do it. Um, Dan had his hand up for a while, and um, sure. I'd like to give him the floor. Yeah, uh, just to follow on to John's thought about the, an automatic response system, wouldn't that also, we would have to have some kind of a means of triaging and tracking emails that come in? I don't know that we have a good way of doing that now. Well, Barry had listed mm -hmm. some of the types of emails that we get, and, and I, I like that idea. Um, right. You know. But we have this big queue of emails. Uh, how do we know what their status is? Uh, there must be some fairly simple email tools. That do what, that. what do you mean by their status is? With well, is it, it's been answered. Yes, yes, it, yes. It's been assigned to someone. Now it's being tracked. It's right. been responded to. Close it out. So yeah, that kind that, of that's, a, that's a challenge. But I do think the They've start to that yeah. is the way Barry's broken up the type of emails that we receive. Sure. Um, I, I, they go together, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I think that yeah. would be a requirement if we're going to really right. do a science out of this. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, um, yes, Vanessa, and then, and then John, and then let's try to wrap up this. Sure. So one of the things I think that sort of I realized, John, after you spoke, which is that um, we all seem to ping the town manager yeah. for updates yeah. on whether or not these emails have right. been handled which in 99% point nine percent of the cases they are in fact handled mm -hmm. but Bob would it be <coughs> possible for you to provide an update at our meetings just for all the emails that are included in our packet not preferably the ones that all the ones from come from the one, various the telecommunications carriers um, but for yeah. the ones that come from the residents to say <coughs> these were directed to the appropriate staff a resolution is in process or has been handled or they've been provided with appropriate instructions just something so that the five of us are on the same page and we're not pinging you individually because I imagine that gets tiresome too um, so that's that's um, one. It, it's it's certainly doable, and actually, in your packet today, there's some examples of that. But it's difficult to know where to draw that line. As yeah. The, this one needs a detailed history of the response, and this one doesn't. I yeah. think. I mean. It, and especially I, I, when you get a number of things on the same topic. Yes. Such as the road issue. Right. I, I think, generally speaking, with and, and I suppose we can discuss this further, but I think. When we get these little one-offs of people, how do I do this? I, I want to change the name of this. I want to change my address. Um, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I don't need a long, detailed history of how you handled it. A, an update at our meeting saying, I addressed this. The person has what they need. They're pursuing it. A staff member's helping. Something even as brief as that, because it gets us all on the same page. I, I don't want to add unnecessary work to you yep. for you to indicate all the details and how this person is being helped, but just to let us know that they are, in fact, being helped. So, um, I also. Oh, oh you're not done. Right. Sorry. Um, you paused. I did pause. Um, <laughs> as news you lose. For Don't the, take a breath. <laughs> um, to the idea of the auto response, um, while it does send an acknowledgement that a, the email has been received, it lacks a personal touch. And I think one of the things I like about sending out the emails is that I'll get an email back from the resident saying, thanks, or can you give me you know, more information on it, this, or the staff member reached out to me, I'm all set, thanks. Um, I, I think that, that when people reach out to us, they expect some kind of a response from us. I mean, to your point, well, the town manager responded, but 
they say you didn't. And right. Yeah. Right. So I, I think an auto response still doesn't give them that satisfaction of knowing that we, the board, have in fact read their email and care about what they've contacted us about. So I don't know. You know, right now I'm doing it as the secretary. We can rotate that as well. Um, but there's something to be said for a personal response. I think. Yeah. I. Uh, you know, as John was saying, he he likes to respond to people, especially once he knows. Um, I'd, I'd like to, if at all possible, uh, and, and I've done that as well, um, and especially on the RAT issue, I wanted residents to know immediately that the board cared, you know, was taking this very seriously. Um, I also have, have, you know, studied RATs and, and sort of, uh, not a hobby, but... <laughs> that's, that's, okay, it's TMI, Everyone, let's go. Stop there right we go. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, thank you. I acknowledge yeah, that. We're still rolling. Um, <laughs> so, um, I, I like that personal touch. And um, so, I, I would propose perhaps moving forward that Vanessa and Barry uh, write up some, some draft language that incorporates, sure. you know, Dan's points. Uh, do you want me to repeat them or nope. you got it all? Yeah. And John's points and and the few points uh, that I had. The, and the other thing too that I, I, I would propose that Vanessa and I get together again yeah. to, to do that, but then also maybe make time. Um, and I think Bob, you had you had offered you know either Matt and or Jane to help out with this, that we can actually then really kind of dig into. Well, if we are going to do the Facebook page, the social media, what are the what are the what are the what are the shoulds and shouldn'ts, and come back with sort of a proposal. Yeah. After we, after we talk with them, obviously and get their input and help. So, if that <coughs> is a way to proceed, then Vanessa and I can kind of. Get back to work on it. Mm -hmm. People in agreement? Yeah. yeah. All right, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Um, right. So, Thanks all for your input. next thing yeah, um, are goals. Thanks to um, Bob. Who, who, put the, who put our goals? Who, Do we skip Board of Health? Oh, oh, I apologize. Yeah, so uh, quick background of this. Um, this shouldn't take long. Uh, the Board of Health decided uh, for the near future they could all meet Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m., um, which they acknowledge is not great for the public. Uh, Dan reached out to me. He has obligations Wednesday morning and, and can't make those meetings. Um, Ultimately, he 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 requested that he re still remain as the liaison, and he uh, uh, recommended appointing a second liaison, someone who could go to some of those morning meetings. Um, I I agree with that approach, and um, I would I would make uh, I know there are downsides to having two liaisons. Um, but I think it's good in that we, you know, we, we get to work with each other on, on certain things. Um, so I'd like to make a motion that we appoint a second uh, liaison to the Board of Health. Um, and, and if that's accepted, then we can move on uh, appointing that second person. So th that's second. the motion. Second discussion. I, I I always think it's good to have two liaisons, especially in even though the board of health is a small board, um, it, it, it's a it's a board that covers a breadth of busy boards issues yeah, too. Um, and I think given the activity that this board is going to be doing over the next few months, it's probably good to have two on this. So yeah, so, yeah. Uh, okay. Any any other discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor for appointing a second liaison to the Board of Health? Okay. So um, now. Uh, I nominate Andy. Um, and a second on that? 
you can make a 10 o'clock meeting once a month? As, yeah, I can not, yeah, I can probably make it if it's once a month, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, I second, I, I can't, so, yeah. you know, I just, I can't I just yeah, so. I, I, look, I look forward, I would really like to work with Dan on this, um, and I think I bring a lot to the table, um, and, um, yeah, so, any other comments? But I do. Yes. Before before we vote on that, and I think it's I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a couple of things. I think, and, and, and the young lady I forget her name, um, who was a, who spoke uh, about the rats. Yeah, um, oh, I can't. I, I met her last yeah, night. and she brought up a great point. And she said, you know, having your meetings at ten o'clock on a Wednesday she morning did. is a bad idea. And, and I tend to agree with that. The fact that we have to, you know, we have somebody who's, you know been on the list and we can't make the meeting because because of, of the way that they're scheduled so yeah. um, I, I think that it's you know it's problematic that uh, and part of the reason I think that that, 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 that such a, a scheduling snafu is that um, it's a small committee and, and yes. um, you know you need two people to make a quorum and if one person you know it, you know it, it's just hard so I had talked about this a long time ago um, I think well over a year ago, and, and, and given the the breadth of what the Board of Health has to cover, mm -hmm. and given the fact that it's really really difficult to convene a quorum, and if you know, for example, the meeting last night, you know, yeah. you guys went. I, I mean, I, I couldn't go. It was a Jewish holiday. I'm glad you guys went. Yeah, um, it means that only one person from the Board of Health could ever go to something like that. Right. So, I want to just throw out the notion, and I know this is not the time for it, but mm -hmm. I want to get it on the thing is to basically because I know it has to go to either the it has to go to bylaw. Um, Might have to go to the voters, but I think it's just a yes. charter change. Right. It's a charter change. It's a charter change, but it, but, it, could be a voter but, it, but it doesn't necessarily have to wait 10 years. Um, is, to, is to basically um, expand the Board of Health from three members to five. It would allow, first of all, much more participation. You know, there's, there's all, it covers so many different things. You could have more people with specialties there. It's easier con to convene meetings. It's easier to do a quorum. I just, I'm throwing that idea out because um, I think given the work that the board does, three people is, is tough to kind of do that business. So um, I, I'm just, again, throwing it out there. Yeah, I, I second that, Barry, uh, although I know that's a longer term. Right. It's, so not, it's not going to solve this I, thing, but On the board of health, when when you, yeah, you know, when I was on the board of health, I couldn't talk to yeah, I know. one other member. Uh, when things cropped up, so there's, there's Vanessa points of view. Yeah, I mean, Vanessa points out that we need to vote and, and move on. But yes. that's the point yeah. well well taken. There you go. All right. So um, all yeah, in favor. Yeah, go ahead. All, all in favor of having me as the second liaison working with, with Dan. Uh, raise your hand. All right. Just so it's, since this is going on the record, uh, I would argue against expanding it. I don't think you're going to help your quorum problem at all. Yeah. Because if you're still meeting at 10:30 in the morning to satisfy the needs of one member, now you're putting. Right. Now you're going to have now someone else that can't make it. But if you have five, plus, yeah. plus most most boards of health in the state are three people. Yeah. This would be somewhat unusual. Yeah. Right. But I, it's not I, well, we can talk about that. Yeah. I, I, so there's point, this, point point well point there well are pros and cons. Yeah. And, and I and I think Dan and, and to your point about the meeting time. Right. Uh, Dan and I can can discuss. Yeah, I, I would share. like to see that back. Yeah, yeah, for that, the that sake needs, of the, the public. Yes, yeah. 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 right, right. The thing is, though, is that if you had five members, you probably wouldn't have to meet in the morning. Okay. Well, you still have one yeah. that can't meet in the evening. So, so, so we got to move on. Okay. Um, our um, our goals. Yes. And. Um, Bob. What page is that on yeah, again? Um, it's a, starts on 42 uh, in the document, uh, the PDF 42. Yeah. I think. Yep. PDF 42. There's a 40, yeah, 42. Okay. Yeah, I thought that was a very effective summary of the votes. Yeah, who did that, uh, Bob? Bob. Yeah. You did? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was very good. Um, I'm sorry, what page is it on again? 42 of the oh, PDF. Ah, yeah. Yeah. there we go. Right there. Thank you. Um, Not the colors. Yeah, so... I your top three choices just visually. Right. It was interesting. 
I'll, I'll just throw this out there. I, I, I feel that all of these goals, it'd be great if we did all of these goals, but that would be, I think, an overreach. Um, and uh, just to start the discussion off, uh, I think um, there were top three and there was a tie for our fourth and fifth um, on the ranking. Let me see. Yep. Yeah. So uh, for, fourth tie, as, as Bob has, has put it well. Um, I would propose that we tackle the first five. Uh, we're a five-member board. Uh, we can team up on each one and, and, and get some working relationships going and those objectives uh, taken. So what are people's thoughts about, about that? Sure, you want to start with the first three? See how we do. That was a lot. Yeah. For, since we haven't done well, this. the first one is a lot. Yeah. The first one is a lot. Um, well, the first one we're doing. We're doing the first one. So yeah. it's almost off. It's, it's, it should almost be taken off. No, 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 it's like it's, you know, yeah, uh, Dan and I, I've got to reach out to Dan very soon to, to work on, we've already done the, 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 um, what's this article to, our, uh, no, li licenses and, that's okay, yeah. boards and committees that you need to, right, to right, um, so I, I will file a disclosure on Oakland Road saying I live on Oakland Road, but I have an open mind about what's going there, and it won't, won't sway my judgment. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'd like, I, you know, look, a couple of us put the fourth and fifth down as our, as our number one, mm -hmm. I, I okay. believe. So, so you so, want to see it. So I think that, um, you know, we can certainly do things in the pri priority order, but I, I, I do think it's important to establish a, a not a, a new EDC but under a different name and I also think it's important uh, to have uh, get a housing trust going given given our recent um, challenges on, on real estate and um, meeting our quota just um, no, I'm just noting. Uh, regarding the EDC uh, a former member, Jack Russell, who's also a former selector, who's no longer in town, uh, at the point where the EDC was disbanded, mm. wrote an interesting email. I'm going to try to find it and send it to all of you. Saying it's, uh, yeah, it did some things well, but it didn't do other things well because we didn't really have the right skills on that committee. We didn't have real people that knew about development. Yeah, that well, committee. that's what, and, and we and more like an Andrew Corona. Uh, so if you're going to want to reconstitute that, I would urge that you take a hard look at that how you ought to constitute it before yeah. you go seeking volunteers. And, and also, the board would need to decide what's the focus of that going to be. Right. Right. Is yeah. it downtown? Is it Walker's right. yeah, right. Is it right. all the above? Oh, I checked the John has on that, on that particular yeah. letter. Yeah. We had several members of the EDC here that night. Yep. Mm -hmm. The letter was in the packet. Yeah. Um, I took the liberty, um, I happened to be chair at the time, of reading that. Uh huh. Because I wanted to be sure that everybody assembled in the EDC, I said, is this, do you all concur that this is kind of what the needs are? Mm -hmm. And everybody either acquiesced or shook their head. I said, Jack, did, did you write this on, under consultation? Yes. It essentially is the reason that that committee was sunset, because it didn't have the composition that the members themselves said was necessary. So I think it's really important that that letter be pulled back out mm -hmm. in the reconstitution. I've got it here. So, you, really? so, yeah, so on that, um, I'm sending it to you all. I, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not. I know you and Vanessa put it as a number as a number one. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, I don't know if you guys read the, the work that Jesse Wilson had done about well maybe two years ago mm -hmm. about some of the different potential strategies. Yeah. Um, I think it's important that we develop a strategy to support our downtown business. <coughs> EDC is just maybe one potential answer, you know, an EDC. Yeah. There could be other kinds of things, some of which don't involve town government. Yeah. 
yeah. town government is an ancillary player as opposed right. to a leading player. I'm not suggesting that that's a better way yeah. than having an EDC or, or, or having an EDC with different different skill set. So if you change the name of this topic to developing a strategy to support downtown business, I'd be all for it. We're having an economic development forum, what, October 2010th? <laughs> I guess I'd be two weeks later if I missed that. You know, we're going to begin to discuss it. Oh, I don't, I, 17th. 17th, 10th yeah. This financial forum, right. sorry. I don't, I don't want to have the, I don't want to just sort of say, here's the answer before we ask the question. So if you said you stra strategy to help downtown, to, you, know, to, you know, to support downtown economic development, you know, because that's going to involve the business community itself. They, you know, you could put five of those folks in here and get six different things of, of how to go. Just saying, having a new EDC with different people on it, I think is a little. It's sort of putting the cart before the horse. I, I, I don't don't fully agree with you there, Barry. Um, I've I've met with some former members of the EDC. Um, I think we hear often from down from people from residents. What are you doing about the downtown? What are you doing about this building? About that building? Um, and and attracting businesses to the downtown. Uh, and I and I think we have a lot of very talented people in this town. Um, if we and, and I think. We're stretched thin. This board is stretched thin. We we could use um, a volunteer committee that is focused on the downtown. That was uh, what was put forth. We can rename it to uh, something else um, than new EDC. Do we all agree that the focus really needs to be on the downtown for this group? As opposed so to going to Walker's. Well, do we have a group focused on Walker's Brook also? That, that's a lot bigger bang for the buck. Yeah, okay. But that's so far down the road. Is it? I mean, no. we, we have. There's parts of Walker's Brook you can move, you can redevelop before the D, you deal with the DPW if you do deal with it. And you may not. I mean, you know, Dan, actually, that's a really interesting proposition, which yeah. is maybe we do need. Different do do focuses. Too different? I don't know. Right. I mean, I think we could have both. We could have them do focus on both. I mean, I think there's there's initiatives that could be undertaken that focus on the downtown that could yeah. happen right now. Yeah. Um, I think South Main Street and the, the Walker's Brook may require more thought from this board and more involvement from this board whereas yeah. downtown I think even if the focus and we rename it and that's fine um, they could have an immediate impact as opposed to a longer term impact. Maybe we approach it in terms of the four primary MAPC development zones that we identified. South Main, the Walkers Brook, down, is that like the downtown and extended down to Green? The whole 40 yeah, yard? Lump downtown all into one. What, what was the other one? There's two parts downtown. Two parts, okay. Yeah. Uh, and the people that were recommended in Jack's letter, commercial real estate broker, a developer, selectman, an interested and dedicated citizen, the director of the Reading North Reading Chamber of Commerce, ideally, or an active local merchant. That, that was the suggested composition that uh -huh. Jack put together. Yeah. Uh, well, let, let, can, can, we, can we say that it will be focused on... Uh, economic improvement of we can we have an understanding that will be focused on economic improvement of uh, one or two areas and and yeah, we can we discuss can that. Them. We, we can prioritize them as the board are we working on this about. goal now or are we trying to no, say yeah, I know I know I think like we're clarifying what the goal actually yeah. 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 yeah yeah I I I think John's right let's let's move on sure and yeah. and yeah. I would like to if people are willing um, to team up on these goals um, and people we, you know, uh, so so the select board policy goal. Dan and I are working on <coughs> section two, mm -hmm. um, and and Barry and Vanessa are covering 1.4. I think that's that's good. Um, 
um, for number two, capital, uh, I'm sorry, the second was capital projects. That is extremely important. In, and I and I think, uh, who, who volunteered for the? Those all, yeah, four all, all, yeah, and, and Vanessa. Yeah, uh, I didn't rank them because I figured it really depended on which ones ended up being in the top yeah. few. Yeah. And actually, recreation space might be a subset of that. Uh, uh -huh. So maybe it's not that that's deprioritized, but it's considered. It's, yeah, it's part of it's part, it's, of, the, it's part the capital. of capital. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's part of a capital project. So who who wasn't interested in, in uh, working on that? Oh, of the top that? five yeah. capital projects is definitely what I'm interested in. Yeah, I mean, oh, you said any, but maybe. I, yeah, yeah, I mean, for yeah, me, yeah, it yeah, really yeah. depended yep. on which ones. Yep, yep. Yeah, so, so who, who's, so Vanessa's very all, interested. All the above. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, who, who else? Would I'm be? very interested in capital projects. Yeah, it's all here on page uh, 42. Yeah. Um, but when we talk about capital, pro I just want to be clear what we're talking about. We're talking about sort of starting the conversation about how that's going to work going, going forward. and how we're going to stage it, how we're going to, you know, it, yeah. it, it, it's um, kind of almost like what we did with the override, except instead of operating, it's now, it, it's yeah. now capital. It means working with the school committee potentially on some of those other things. It could also, <coughs> it, you know, it can kind of incorporate Oakland Road if there's, yeah. you know. Well, uh, it, it does incorporate yeah. Oakland Road and it does incorporate recreational right. Right. space. Right. Yeah, it, um, but I, so. I do think we need two separate people working on uh, uh, on you got four. Bottom line, there four people signed up. Well, you know what you could easily do is do subsets of that <coughs> because honestly, yeah. Oakland Road is a subset of, 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 the, of the capital yeah. project. Yeah, and it's going to have its own disposition. Process. But it's I, I, yeah, we need two separate people yeah. working on that in addition to the capital. That's I know why. That's what I'm saying to you. Is yeah. If you have four or five people willing to work on. <coughs> Capital project, which, which we apparently do. Okay, there, it's all of it's of interest to all of us. Yes, capital projects as a as a as a heading. Yeah, really has <coughs> subcategories. Several of them have been identified yes. as lower, you know, one a higher ranking capital project, which is Open Road. Do you buy it? Do you do you sell it? Do you yeah. keep it? Do you develop it? Obviously, fits under capital projects. Yes, recreation space has nothing to do really with the recreation committee or no. programs. It's it, it, we, there's what's our space? There. What do we do with it? Yeah. Should we invest in it? How would we invest in it? Again, yeah. capital projects. So yeah. maybe the way that this you skin this cat yeah. is you, you let us that. all work on this thing. Yeah, yeah. Or skin the rat. <laughs> That's um, there. You go. More works acceptable. Um, is that you have a subset of capital projects. And, sure. You know, um, two of us work on, I mean, obviously, we could have three teams here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, three of us can't work together. And, right. you know, right now, for example, the policies, I'm the odd man out because we've got two policies. Are you okay with that? I'm, I'm, oh, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm okay, okay with okay. that. So I hear I'm it. Thrilled. I hear what you're saying, John, and so to, to, to try to wrap up, I, then can we get two leads on the capital, two people working as leads on the capital project, and um, I, with the, the first part of that being the housing trust, and then we assign two people to do that. So, um, Bob, we have to have Can I just, um, let me just add, um, Barriers at the last school committee. I, I have a lot of background on this. Let me just describe what I see as four capital areas that are not affordable within the tax levy and thus lend themselves to be projects. One is elementary school space. <coughs> so yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Clearly one. Right. The other is a community center, senior center, whatever you want to call it. Yes. Um, third one is um, DPW garage, uh -huh. which may be related to it. So we've yep. already discussed. The fourth one. It's a little bit more generic, but there's a lot of work in and around Birch Meadow and the high school that is all recreation slash athletic oriented. Yes. That cannot, some of that can be afforded within the levy, a lot of it cannot. Yeah. And then tangentially to that, is there other space in town? So it naturally <coughs> folds into four areas quite easily. And I don't know what the fifth one is. Well, well Oakland Road. I guess, 
I guess Oakland Road could be a solution to some of these, and it could be on its own. You're right. right. Uh, it, it, I mean, the, 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 the town, town meeting asked us to sell that property a while ago. Well, dispose so of so so it. Can I dispose, offer, I'm sorry, dispose of it. Can yes. I offer an organ? You know, yes. I know, so for example, Vanessa's going to work on something and bring it back. What? Yeah. If you wouldn't mind, I mean, I'm happy to take this capital project thing and then, yeah, you, you know, you think about it in terms of what Bob's saying and come back with a recommendation at our next meeting as to mm -hmm. what that might look like. Um, in other words, I think, you know, you said earlier, yep. it would be nice if we could do all of these. Yeah. Okay. And then I've said over and over, if, if it's more than one hand, then you probably are not going to manage right. it. Really well. <laughs> right. There may be a way to... Do cheat, both. cheat. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. actually, I, I, yeah. if you wouldn't way. mind me working on a, a little organizational suggestion to bring back in sure. a few weeks right. on sure. that particular item. Uh, and then you'll see if you like it or you don't like it. And we can make, okay. And are you okay with that, Vanessa? Because you would yeah. express an interest. No, I think that's great. Okay, thank, thanks, John. Um, so we have capital budget, uh, we got the policy, capital projects, Oakland Road will fit, will, will I think it fits there. Fits there. Um, and then the housing <coughs> trust, which Barry suggested, and, and I'd be happy to work on it with him, although I'm not, I recognize I'm not the best candidate for this, but I will None learn. None of us are I, experts I, in everything. I will learn. Right. Um, and this, by the way, could probably be done the first, right? This could, be, this, could be, this could be the first thing we can kind of check off the box if, if, if it's vote, you know, if we yeah. get yep. it done, it'll be done in April. Yeah, so. okay. Are people okay with that? Yep. Yes, and then um, uh, the, the new EDC, uh, I'd also like to work on. Um, yeah, you and I are signed up for that. You and I are signed up for that. Okay, good. So Dan and I will work on the, the new EDC. I would just just re rename it because the, the, yeah. you know, the EDC, okay. the EDC pre predisposes a solution mm -hmm. when there could be many solutions. So that, that's, that's my, you know. At, at least to maybe come up with the process by which we figure out what we're going to do as opposed well, to I, this is yeah, the answer. Again, uh, you know, that's these are the things we voted on it as, yeah. as they are. I have no problem with saying uh, creating a, a, a volunteer committee to address economic needs in Reading or something like that. <coughs> yes, Bob. Um, just to remind you, um, Barry and Vanessa know quite well, if two of you are going to meet, you've got to post the meeting. Yes. You've got to let us know yep. more than 48 hours in advance. Yep. And it really should be in a public location. Yep. yep. Not, and if it's in your house, it has to be open. Two. Yep. Um, and I was... That's for two? Yes. Yeah. If we're offended, if One is fine. Yeah. One can do whatever they want, but if it's two... Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, so it has fine. to be done. It has to be done. And, and, um, and on the EDC, I would strongly suggest that you two sit down with George Cation and talk to him. He's okay. got a tremendous amount of experience okay. in this area. Yeah. There, there's a, I, I met with Sheila Clark on yep. this issue. She's pretty knowledgeable she is. as well. Yeah, she was involved uh, and, in and has some good ideas. So Dan, Dan and I, we can work on that. Absolutely. Um, look, looking forward to it. Um, okay, we good? Housing Trust? Housing Trust, Barry and I. Oh. So is everyone getting the fair share of, of yeah. work here? Well, the next step would be to actually lay out some milestones that yes. we expect to achieve in the next year. Yep. Because these are very generic. I, mean, I agree. Just the yep. title of the goal yep. right here. Yep. D sort of whittle them down, sort of propose e a... EDC, uh, proposed name, yep. proposed composition, yep. recruit membership, yep. appoint membership. Those per, are all per admission, steps. You yeah. said admission. Absolutely. So so each uh, each team will be responsible for coming up with those, that timeline. Yep. And uh, yeah, well, Bob, we will post them. How often okay. should we bring this back to the board? Uh, Every meeting. Every meeting? Well, there may be some things that are just maybe still cooking in the oven. Some other, things maybe. Well, once a month, that'd be every other. It could be an ongoing agenda item, and there may not be much to report on certain things. You not do it during your liaison. Yeah, yeah, we could do it during uh, liaison agenda item. But, but there may be some yeah. some 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 upfront discussions going to be needed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I think that we 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 determine. Who's ready to present something? Right. I mean, might, and then we put them into the agenda. I recommend a, whoever just said it, a standing agenda item on the topic, and then having all five 
subcommittees present might be unrealistic. Right. So from one meeting to the next, we can determine <coughs> who's going to present based on who has something yeah. to report. But yeah. I, I think that's fine. Yeah, we need something to keep us honest. And honest. Yes, yes, I, I, I agree. Do we, do we, do we, would you guys and, and uh, um, Vanessa, sorry, I just say guys. Um, would you all feel more comfortable vo voting on these five goals and and as a message to the town or do you think our discussion is enough? Um, a simple motion except uh, prioritize goals one through five as our uh, working class of goals for the next year. I'll second that. Okay. Um, I think we've discussed it en enough. Is it? So uh, all in favor? Okay, five. There you go. Great, thanks. Um, get my computer back up and running. <sighs> Sorry, new computer, uh, just like John's, and I'm, I'm having. A little bit Surface, of trouble yep. in navigating. Great computer, but um, uh, it takes this old guy a little while to. Uh, so, so now we're into town manager review and FY. I think yeah, FY nineteen goals. So we just did those. Yeah, for the town manager as opposed to the site. Oh right. Yeah. We'll race. Yeah. So. So I wanted to say a quick introduction to this and thought, throw out an idea for maybe how to uh, approach this. Bob already mentioned this in his, in his email. I just want to clarify, um, this doesn't have to be the way we approach it, um, but I wanted to give you my thoughts. Um, I envisioned that for this discussion, and um, I'm cognizant that we need to go in executive session at some point soon, so uh, I realize we may not fin finish this tonight. Um, so <coughs> I envision that we would spend the majority of the time focusing on uh, town managers' goals or objectives or whatever we want to call them. Um, and my thinking is that we've all read each other's reviews. Uh, and, and, and Bob's had a chance to read them. Uh, the performance reviews are useful to identify areas for improvement that the board may want to consider incorporating into this year's set of goals or objectives. Um, so, so that's sort of where I'd like to end up as, as soon as possible. Um, that said, I don't want to give short shrift to the reviews. Um, and so I thought that each member should have the opportunity to speak uh, about their review, and then also Bob be given the chance to give his thoughts about the review and what he, he, he got out of them. What is the, how does the board feel about that? We, we go around, we highlight, if you want to, um, any parts of your review, and then, um, and then Bob give his thoughts on the review, Reviews. But we allowed to ask other reviewers questions about their comments. Sure, as long as it doesn't. I mean, I think here's the thing about for, that. For clarification. Yeah, for clarification. The, the, the thing about that is we all have, you know, five <coughs> different people, five different personalities. We have different interactions with Bob and the town, and hear different things um, from different residents. So, so your answer is yes, in short. So yes. Okay. Yeah. Th thank you, Dan. Thank you. Um, okay. Does that sound, John? Mm -hmm. Sure. I'm up first. Van well, Van uh, Vanessa, I just want to make sure we're Are you okay with that? All right. Go. Um, so uh, just as an overview, yeah, I think that this is a wholly inadequate form. I, I thought it was terrible. I, I would not have used this on the CEO of the company. Um, it's a form that the CEO uses quite appropriately across the board with the employees of the town. Um, I feel that the position is different and it requires a different approach. 
we have used a different approach for the last several years that I thought was actually very good, mm -hmm. and we've abandoned it. So that's, you that's know. Like, didn't we use this last year? Yeah. We did, but we, did we use departed from another format we were using three years ago. Yes. Oh, that was it. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, that form allowed us, and I just say this as a commentary, it allowed us to take a look at bundles of objectives. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they were they were in front of us on the form. Mm -hmm. And it lent itself, I think, to a more thorough conversation, at least for me. Yeah. Um, honestly speaking, if I don't have the reference material in front of me, um, I'm probably not going to do as good a job. Yeah. And for that reason, I found this form, for me, mm -hmm. um, a form that didn't get the job done. Um, I, I will say in the, in, in the brief areas of competency, um, I find our town manager, generally speaking, to exceed a standard that I would expect. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've observed that very closely for a period of almost five years now. And I, I see, you know, a steadiness in all of those areas, both uh, there are some, I mean, there was only four areas of management core competencies mm -hmm. that <clears throat> are so general and beg so much more discussion, but, you know, be that as it may. Um, so when you look at, at mine, you see you see a very small amount of meeting standards, very much exceeding standards, based on my own observation of how the trains run on time yep. and, you know, the efficiency of that going forward. Um, I found in the absence of those bundles of objectives and completions, um, I found it very difficult to comment in the other areas. I didn't feel like taking each one of them. I wasn't going to take each one of those and write a yeah. dissertation about it because I don't think I needed to. It says it, you know. Yeah. It asked me what I thought, I, and I said it with a check mark. Yeah. Um, I do believe that, um, and I will just quote myself in the personal commentary that I chose to do at the very end, um, I believe that Bob has done an exceptional job with many large and pressing issues facing the town in a very difficult year. His ability to budget for two possible outcomes, calmly overseeing the difficulties connected to the successful override, expertly managing and trying to maintain staff levels and morale in this difficult recruiting period, all speak to his strong skills as an administrator and I think as a leader. Um, so that kind of tells you in a general way how I look at Bob's performance. Um, I, I, I strongly recommend that we find a better way to evaluate our CEO than this. That's just an opinion of mine. Um, but, you know, I guess it got the job done. Uh, so that's it. Thanks, John. Vanessa? Sure. Um, John, I'm inclined to agree with you. I didn't feel that this form was um, well suited for what we needed to do. Um, I mean, I, I intentionally um, kept mine to areas that I've engaged with the town manager in, in the previous five or six months. Um, the one part where um, I did make a comment um, where I wasn't on the board is in regards to the override. I did work with Bob as a member of the Finance Committee, um, and I wanted to call attention to um, the amazing work that he did there uh, along with his staff. Um, so I realized I wasn't on the board then, but I, I felt that that needed to be highlighted. Um, otherwise, I feel it speaks for itself. Um, I agree with John. I, I didn't really like this form. Um, I don't. I particularly think it's uh, a little too aggressive when you are, have three categories and you you see some area for potential improvement to give it does not meets. I, I don't I I don't like that at all. Um, I had <coughs> noted a couple of uh, areas and I wrote them as. Uh, Professionally, as I as I as I could, um, they are truly only meant for um, if if the board and Bob feel that these are areas where he could work on, then then we'll include that. But if the board doesn't agree, then uh, so be it. But they're, they they they're meant as uh, op opportunities for growth, not as a uh, 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 an attack of any sort. Anyway. 
I, I, I would like to part of the, one of the things I did, uh, the other thing I don't like about this forum is that everything negative is up, up front. <laughs> so uh, I, I would prefer just to have uh, change this form. And but I would like to read what I, I think Bob is exceptional at um, because it's always good to f focus on. Um, his quality of work and what he does. So I wrote that Bob has performed well in many of the competencies listed in part two. His quality of work with town finances reflects a deep understanding, I would say frighteningly deep understanding of the subject matter. Uh, during presentations for the override, Bob worked well with the, the police, fire, finance, and library departments to demonstrate the need for additional FTEs and services. Um, as noted last year, uh, Bob works long hours. Uh, something that shows in his productivity when preparing for these these meetings. Almost always, Bob, when we have a question, Bob has an answer. Um, and I, and during my first couple months as chair, I, I really I am grateful for Bob's support. Um, he has made it much easier uh, for me. So that's it, Barry. Well, I don't want to sound like a broken record about the form, um, but you know, <laughs> duly noted. I, you know, exactly. And, and 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 maybe you know, when we get to this next year, whoever's you know, whoever's leading that, you know, it, it maybe take a month and figure out. We'll resurrect the old one and make yeah, some changes. Or, or, to or it. maybe just see you know, kind of what. You know, I know the school committee. Well, they, they, they you know, they're, they're statutually required to yeah, have a right. certain form, but maybe Mass Municipal has like a, you know, yeah. something that we could look at. So, you know, I hated the form, um, so I basically wrote my own evaluation. Yeah. So I wrote five pages. Uh, so, you, you know, disobeyed. I disobeyed. I disobeyed, and, and only because it's sort of like I, I it's like I, I used to hate getting the report card and say, okay, I got a an A minus. But, you know, you didn't tell me what that meant. Like, what yeah, did I do yeah, well? Yeah. What did I, you know? So I just basically took that and I wrote a paragraph or two on those kinds of things. Um, which, you know, for me was easy work um, because <laughs> there was so much positive mm -hmm. stuff to say. I mean, Bob, you know, Bob's skills um, and talents run a multitude of, of you know, and it, you know, of, of topics. I, you know, when I went back and I just said, you know, um, what do we do this year? I just went back and I and I reread my state of the town address, mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah. holy moly, this is what we got. To. I mean, everybody thinks it was, you know, the old Bill Clinton line: "It's the economy, stupid." You know, mm -hmm. it's the override, stupid. Look how much stuff we got done in addition to the override. Yeah, you know, from a public exactly. safety perspective, from a planning perspective, you know, to run the gamut. Union perspective. Right, just basically, you know, uh, collective bar, all that stuff that we got done when the override really was the overriding issue. And, you know, and basically, you know, Bob's help got us through the override because the materials that were produced, and obviously, you know, we all helped and, and, and we kind of led that. And the, the part for me that really stuck out was for the first, and I think this was really set the set the stage in motion for getting that over the past. Um, was when Bob let Bob let the let the dogs out, right? He basically stepped aside and he let his lieutenants tell the story, right? Unfiltered, uncensored. Um, it used to get done in private, and they yelled a lot, and then there was a budget that was presented, and you never really knew what people thought, right? Because yeah. they just said, yeah, no, no, we can live with that, right? But here it is. They opened up the hood, and he allowed everybody to look in. And I think that that, for the first time, really allowed the town to kind of see how well we were doing on the shoestring. Mm -hmm. And I think it took a lot of courage to do that, right? Because yeah. what it was going to potentially lead, it was going to maybe lead us down a path where everybody realized we need this stuff and we're not and we can't afford it right but yeah. you know he trusted his folks to not go crazy to tell the real story um and that gave us information as so you know from the select board and the finance committee when you were on there too you you know you got that that took i thought incredible courage and that's the one thing that i really kind of want to highlight out of all of this um because um it broke precedent 
from the way things got done in the past. And the way to make this town get back on its feet was to break precedent from the way we've done things in the past. Um, and so, you know, out of the five pages of stuff that I wrote, that's the one thing I want to mm -hmm. I, I want to highlight. And I, I, Bob, we're lucky to have you. Um, you know, the, the, the one thing I'll say is that you should take all your vacation, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, you do work too hard. I try. Um, and, and, and then the, the other thing, too, is like, you know, we're in a very kind of divided, divisive kind of political mindset. And right now, you know, everybody has to watch what they say. You know, we'll fight it out here left and right about different things with folks in the community. You have to be Switzerland, right? Um, and it's very, very hard because you might say something and people say, oh, see, now you say, you know. So y your job in communicating became that much more difficult because, you know, everything was just so heightened. Um, and, and I thought you handled it. I thought you handled it really well. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to come back at you soon, hopefully, with a piece of paper that you'll sign. <laughs> um, and, but we're lucky to have you. And I thank you for your work. Thanks. Dan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Bob, it's an honor and a privilege to have you as our town manager. Um, I think you demonstrated tonight one of my points. Uh, and I'll read it off my summary. Bob demonstrates a strong ethical approach to managing staff as well as himself. Now, the fact that you brought that disclaimer because you've got rats in your neighborhood and you could be affected. Right. Did you have to do that? I don't know. I think that's an example of going right. out of your way to uh, you know, leave no, no trace of doubt that you're trying to be ethical about this thing. Uh, I'll second Barry's uh, and everyone else's comments about your stellar work on uh, getting the information out on the override. Uh, a somewhat unsung accomplishment is Bob's strong ability to negotiate with the unions and not just within the town union but across the board including the school unions and Bob was able to achieve some very important health care cost savings by getting an omnibus approach accomplished with all those unions. Think about what a daunting task that yeah. is. And, uh, You've got to be. Uh, We're going to send them over to the steel workers and. Uh, yeah. I've thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give you. Uh, we'll, I've met both we'll, sides. And we'll give you a waiver from your job to solve it. <laughs> um, I was a kid. For the sake of public safety. Yeah, I, I, I realize there have been staffing challenges, uh, and, and I would agree with actually some of my colleagues that we would like to see a little more data on the, what the root cause of those is. Is it, is it dissatisfaction? Is it salary? Is it something else? Uh, but whatever way you feel you can exchange that information, either in executive session or, or probably an open session. But job, Bob has uh, continued to adjust staffing to provide uh, superior public service despite staff vacancies. Uh, he's built a culture of trust with many of the town employees uh, through his candor and personal integrity. Uh, so, uh, and the override comments, I think, yeah. I don't need further discussion. It, uh, the degree, in the 2016, a, a good to great job was done, and, and a truly exemplary job was done by you and staff this time. Uh, and I think uh, as, you know, the head of the town has integrity, the voters are led to follow that integrity and, and give a yes vote. Uh, if they didn't trust the information they were getting, if it was incomplete, confusing, I don't think that yes vote would have happened. So uh, that's all I have. I did have one question about uh, some folks did bring up some negative aspects. Um, I think Vanessa, you did touch on the staffing, and Andy, you touched on Bob getting along with some employees and not others. Or, or volunteers. Well, yeah. well volunteer. a, okay. a, I, I recognize that's a daunting task. I've written hundreds of performance reviews yeah. as, as a manager. Yeah. And one of the tenets of writing a performance review is it should never be a surprise to the person you're writing it about. And I'm, I'm hoping that you had some opportunity to privately or previously discuss those concerns with Bob before you put it in black and I did. Out. I did ask, and, and Bob felt it, it, it should be done uh, publicly All right. and in, in email. And, um, um, but but I, I'd be happy to um, sit down and discuss that. Again, I, I think um, Bob has a tough job, yeah. and I understand that um, he, that, that uh, it, it's it's hard to get along with everybody. But um, yeah, and certain employees 
can go over their boss's head and complain. And, uh, yeah, we yeah. have to be a little bit careful about that. Yeah, I know, I know. And but 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 I, you know, I, I don't want to get into it. Uh, too, yeah, I just too, want to raise too, those. Too as a, it's a mild um, concern, but if you said you addressed yeah. it privately, then yeah, um, probably you did too. Yeah. yeah. So so I'd be happy to sit down with Bob okay. and, and, and discuss those. It, but I think first we should wait to see where the board wants to go um, with goals and objectives and stuff like that. Right. So, but, but I'd like to hear from Bob um, on his thoughts on the, on the, on the review. Well, I appreciate the effort and the work that you all put into it. Um, just to give you a little background on the form, it's negotiated with unions and it was done many years ago and it hasn't changed for many years. Mm -hmm. We use this form for every union except one and all non-union employees. Mm -hmm. Um, from a management standpoint, the hardest part of my job, if you think about it, is the different kinds of employees we have and the ability to somehow communicate with all of them and to use a standard form to at least judge their performance. Yep, not we get that. Um, so that's the nature of the form, and a couple of years ago the board agreed to use it and go away. I don't mind whatever form and format you want. I generally agree with Barry that my takeaways are not necessarily your numerical scores, so to speak. It's your comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, whether they're positive or negative, you generally learn a little more from the negative. But I don't mind yeah. the positive ones. <laughs> you know, Bob, I think the form that we were using prior to this it was goals oriented. Yes, and, and whether we wanted to call them goals or right. respond, roles and responsibilities, which is really more, even though they were called goals on that form, they yeah. were really the roles area. and responsibilities. Yeah. yeah, and they were bundled in areas of four or five. Yeah, I However, there were subsets, right. and I thought that that form let me yeah. review the year. You know, tied to things we've been talking about over, you know, 22, 24, 25 meetings. And it allowed for me to be able to give you better commentary feedback. Yeah, right. This doesn't, I felt like this comes up short. And I, I said that at the beginning because I understand completely the need for standard a standard form across yeah, you know a handful of unions. Right. Your job is a hundred percent on its own plane mm -hmm. compared to everybody else. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I so agree. that's why that's why I took it. Yeah, with the I'm, so John, I, I just want to keep moving. I, I hear you. I think the board agree, all agrees with you, and that we're we're going to do something about that. Good. Um, um, the other area I would like to address that also Barry brought up mm -hmm. in Switzerland. Yes, um, my objective is to make as many people in this town equally uncomfortable with my solution and stance as possible and to not appear to have taken the side. Mm -hmm. But it is becoming much more difficult because if I don't agree with someone, then I must be on the other side <coughs> when I'm not agreeing with either side. <laughs> yeah. And um, that has taken an enormous amount of time from staff to deal yeah. with. Um, it is not productive use of time, but it is something we're just finding in other communities as well. It's not Reading. Um, and I don't know what to do about that as, as John's word, the CEO. I don't know how to make the, the organization more productive with the divisiveness that's going on in society broadly. Right. It's not easy. Um, they, they see, they watch your meeting, they watch other meetings, they pay attention to a lot of social media. Yeah. There's still a number of employees that live in town and they love the town. Um, it's hard for them to see some of the divisiveness that's going on and not yeah. us know what to do with yeah. that. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry about that, that well, that happens, but <laughs> I, th I think that. tonight, you, 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 hopefully people have seen us working in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, an improved manner, um, and, and perhaps if, if, you know, not to be uh, overly uh, presumptuous, but if we could serve as role models, we all have we all have different constituencies and supporters and yada yada. But um, if people see us all working together in, in polite and and uh, even in disagreement, you know, civil uh, discourse, hopefully that will. Uh, yeah, and I think one of the things that kind of goes unspoken and unseen is um, you all and I work for a lot of people that we never hear from. Yeah. Um, we hear from some percentage frequently. Yeah. yeah. We don't hear from a much larger percentage very rarely. 
and I'm always very, very mindful of that. I yeah. don't always know what they think or want, but I know enough people in town that I have some ideas. Yeah. And it's really important not to forget those people. Yeah. And, and we kind of try our best. And the only thing I'll say about employee morale is, um, I don't know how you measure it, I don't know how you study it, I don't know how you study whether we have problems or not. Um, but anecdotally, I, this morning I heard of three DPW workers that left for other towns and came back. Um, they gave up raises because they couldn't stand working in the other town. Mm -hmm. Just didn't have the same whatever. Yeah, that <coughs> right. yeah. Um, I'm very proud of that. Um, it's not something that's going to be easy to hold on to. But yeah. We'll do our best. Yeah. Um, we're not for everyone. We're a hard-working town. Yeah. Uh, all the managers, including myself, are workers. Yeah. That is not common in our yeah. field. Um, so the Reading is not for everyone. The community yeah. has very high expectations. We yeah. do our best to meet them. Um, you know, we're always looking for ways to improve, but we have to be practical about what is possible, what is yeah. difficult. Yeah. So, but I, I mostly appreciate the effort y'all put into this. It's very clear. Um, and, and I did enjoy uh, reading through. And I agree with John, especially that uh, a different form that would encourage more words and more thoughts would be beneficial for all of us. <coughs> okay. Um, with that, I'd like to consider we have to get the executive session meeting. Mean, we have minutes to talk to you first. Yeah. Um, you goals or you want to skip that? Um, I'm sorry, so, so for town manager goals, how does the board feel about uh, tabling that till our next? Yep. I was going to suggest fine. that. Yep. Okay. That's fine. Um, so that, and that, then that leaves us, I think, with uh, going into executive session. Two, Approval minutes. of minutes of the 21st of 2018. Um, um, any comments, John? No. On the on the minutes? On the minutes, yeah. Uh, we're, 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 I do. Can okay. someone just tell me what page it's on so I can? Uh, just tab. I, I was talking with Caitlin, by the way, on this, and, and she has a good program. She can turn some of this into searchable yep. text material. Leave it as PDF. Um, uh, 93, yeah. So, yeah. What then, page? Uh, page 93. What was it? 93 in the PDF. 93. Um, is there a motion to the yes. top? Secretary. Oh, that's 21st minutes. No, oh, oh, a motion to, uh, uh, yeah, would, can someone, uh, Vanessa, can you make a motion? Um, to motion to approve the approve. select board meeting minutes of August 21st, 2018. Second. <coughs> okay, discussion. Um, I still have one, uh, one change. Okay, yeah. let me, let me just oh, go, I'm sorry. Go, go in order. John, okay. uh, Vanessa, oh, I, I had no comments. Uh, Barry. Um, under, uh, I don't know what page, uh, 6A3, uh, uh -huh. uh, I guess, uh, where it says, Mr. Berman explained that there's a clear desire here to move on. And then the second sentence, um, I I'd like to replace it. Um, it. It says right now, some people may have taken Mr. Halsey's words the wrong way. Um, what I actually said to John was, John, your words may have convened a meaning different than what you intended. Hmm. Is what I actually said. Yeah, I think that's right. One of them makes this, the, the, the you know the, the speaker more active as opposed to passive. So and, th and that's the actual what I said. Yeah. John, your words may have convened a meaning different than what was in conveyed. You mean C conveyed, conveyed? I'm sorry. Yeah. A meaning. Conveyed. No, conveyed a meaning different than what you intended. I actually have one edit. Okay. Go sorry. out, out sorry, of there, order you're again. Done. No, that was all I had. Uh, Vanessa? To be scolded. Uh, yeah. 6A4. Yep. Uh, at the very top, um, uh, Ms. Alvarado would like to work, to look more into working with RMLD. Uh, I would add, <coughs> for example, on electric charging stations. There's more things we can do with RMLD. I just want yeah. that, yeah. Dan. Yeah, I have a little one. Uh, top of 6A2. Uh, I don't think Rick Rich just said they'd be coming to see us. I would reword that to say, Mr. Ensminger noted that um, the 
uh, recreation committee reported friends of Reading Recreation donated a batting cage and friends of Reading High School baseball. Yeah. Oh, or, is that what it or is? The donors. I'm sorry, got that wrong. Yep. And the select board needs to accept the gift formally. Friends so. of Reading Baseball or something else? Friends of Reading High School Baseball is in 501c3 that actually okay. wants to make the purchase so, and gift it to the town. No, words, rec committee didn't say they'd have to come in for okay. that, just that we have to approve it. So, Mr. Mirna, uh, that recreation noted. Recreation committee. <laughs> Friends of Reading High School Baseball want to donate? Yep, a batting cage, and they need the select board to accept the gifts formally. Okay. It's yep. a portable batting cage. It should be noted. Turtle, 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 yeah, turtle batting cage. Turtle. Yeah. It's a portable batting cage, is what it's yeah. really titled. So. Looks like a turtle. It's not for turtles. <laughs> That's it. Okay. okay. Um, so, uh, all in favor to accept the minutes as amended? Great. Um, with that, I close the. Uh, need a public. motion, motion to, to go to into. Motion. Yeah, okay, okay. Sarah. Uh, move to go into executive session to approve previous executive session minutes <coughs> and that the chair declare that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the body and not to return to open session. Um, we have to do this by roll call. Yes, right? you do. I need a second. Second. Roll call. Yes, John. Aye. Uh, yes. Uh, Vanessa. Yes. Andy. Yes. Yes. Van. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Barry. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, great. All right. So. Uh, and not, we said not to come back. No. No. Right. Right. Okay. We're going next door.